All right. What's going on? Good morning. Can I get a good morning? morning. Yeah. A little more life. Good morning. morning. Very nice. We're all awake, right? Sort of. I'm going to try to keep it that way. I have a few moments. Something like, uh, what, 30, 35-ish? Right? Of my voice. Hopefully that's not too bad for you guys. I'll do my best to keep it entertaining, fun, educational, informative, and all the above. Does that work? I get a head nod? Beautiful. Beautiful. What schools are being represented this morning? Awesome. Cool. What I heard was, yeah, 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 yeah. So let's try again. Milton High is in the building. Who else? Randolph High is in the building. A Avon is in the building. So I got Milton, Randolph, Avon. Canton. Norwood. Cool. Very cool. I heard Randolph. Very strong voice. Cool. Well, I've been in all those towns on the last, I don't know, 10 years or so, uh, even though I, was, I would grew up in um, kind of all over. Not a military brat, but I definitely moved around when I was younger. I lived in Nashua, which is in New Hampshire. I lived in Hudson, which is also in New Hampshire. And then I moved to Haverhill. Uh, and that was a bit of a culture shock for me because that's when I realized that this wasn't a tan. I was actually another race because in New Hampshire, I just was a little confused for a couple of years. <laughs> so I moved to Haverhill. I was like, oh, this is not a tan. So uh, that was pretty cool for me. Uh, played sports. Sports were cool. After Haverhill, I moved down to this area, Milton. What college is in Milton, Mass? Curry. Camp Curry, exactly. So I went to Camp Curry, and then when I finished there, I lived in Canton, Jamaica Plain, Hyde Park, Milton, and now I live in Braintree slash Quincy. So I've been kind of in around the whole South Shore over the last couple of years. Uh, I love this area. I think these towns are great. I've been in Avon before speaking. I've been in Randolph before speaking. Uh, I do all of Canton's proms. I've been doing them for like five years, which I'll get into more. You're like, that's how I know this guy. I knew I knew this guy. Why do you look so familiar? So, um, and I'll get into that more a little bit later on. So, been around a little bit. Um, what that does for me, um, there's advantages and disadvantages. Disadvantages might be that it's, it, it was difficult to like have friendships because I was moving around a lot. So if we were best friends and I move, it's hard to be best friends. This is before text messaging existed. So to call someone, you had to like hope they were home, which you guys have no idea what that's like. Like you'd call someone if they weren't home, you talk to the parents. Hi, Mr. Robinson, I'm looking for Jack. Well, Jack's not here right now. Well, where is Jack? We're in high school. We don't have any lives, so where would he be? And Jack was out, and you had to wait until Jack got home and called you back. See how confused you are? <laughs> just madness, right? Like, wait a minute. You didn't just text him or Twitter him or Facebook him or Instagram him or, uh, or FaceTime? I mean, how many more are there? Right? Flickr and Foursquare. I mean, it's really, really scary. To be honest, um, back then you just called someone's house with a cell phone the size of like, you know, a car part with an antenna, made a call, and that was it. Right? Right? She's like, I don't know what you're talking about, just to keep going on the story. <laughs> so <clears throat> that was tough, but some of the advantages are I've been able to live in different environments, different demographics, uh, which has allowed me to see like different people, um, uh, different classes of people, people with more money, people with less money. People with more resources, people with less resources, um, people who are more athletic, people who are less athletic, uh, people who are really intelligent, and people who are less intelligent. <laughs> it happens. All right? So I went to Curry College. Uh, I'm going to kind of jump around a little bit because I have ADD, and I'm assuming that some of you in this room do. That's not a bad thing, okay? It's a very good thing. Stop letting people tell you it's a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. I think ADD is amazing. Fact. All right? So I went to Curry College. In Curry College, I was going to school to be an FBI agent. You guys have seen 24 at least once in your life? Jack Bauer, the show. You can raise your hand so I know. Yeah? Once or twice. He's always saving the world. He needs all this information, but he can't tell you anything. Right? I need to know how to get in touch with the president. Why? I can't tell you that. Just where's the president? And then he always saves the day, 24 hours. Takes like six months of your life, though. Right? Because the show is like one hour a day. Yeah. So, I want to be that guy. That show wasn't out when I was in high school, but I want to be an FBI agent, save the world, have no life, lie to my wife, you know what I mean? My kids think I'm a school teacher. 
special features in my phone, like my car can fly, you know, that kind of stuff, right? I speak 17 languages, right? One of my names is like, you know, Youssef, another country, that kind of stuff. That's what I wanted to do for a living, right? Save the world and no one ever knew, right? That's what I wanted to do. <clears throat> in case it isn't obvious, I'm not an FBI agent. Just want to make sure that's clear. We good? All right, good. So, <clears throat> maybe I am, you never know. So, but in college, something happened to me, which was I took a class with a professor. His name was uh, Professor or Dr. Jack Kahn, and he was a psychology uh, teacher, professor, and it changed my whole entire like, universe. Um, there was that one, that's one moment. Another moment for me was uh, entertainment, which is dance, which I'll talk about in a second. So, in that psychology class, we went over psychology. And it opened up a whole new world of thought for me, which was like, wow, to understand how people think or where they come from and to empathize and to relate or understand was like, like a whole, I, lo I, just, I, lo I was like, this is, this is phenomenal. So needless to say, the FBI thing went down the tube because I was like 17 more years of schooling and I was like, pass. So I decided to do what I do now for a living, which is going to eventually make sense, I promise. <clears throat> the other thing that happened to me in college was dance. So how many of you people in here like to dance? You can raise your hand strong, it's cool. We all got deodorant on, right? Maybe? <laughs> if you don't, don't raise your hand. <laughs> Alright, so, <clears throat> people like to dance, right? How many people like to dance publicly? Like you're not ashamed, you'll, 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 you know, you'll dougie right now in the, in, the, in the room, right now you'll get it on, right? Yeah? Alright, cool. Just checking, just checking, just checking. Okay, cool. How many people will dance like, you know, at the crib, no one's around, front of the mirror, right? You're supposed to be doing homework, you're in the room like, you know, call me maybe. Don't front, fellas, I know you know the words. <laughs> I know you know the words. So, <clears throat> so people like to move. Music is amazing. I was one of those guys who was kind of like a, you know, with my friends. You know, I would dance, we'd all have some fun. A lot of like, back then, guys only danced if you did like reggae dances, like dance hall. Now, everybody dances, but back then it was like if you were a dancer, you were kind of got picked on, all that kind of stuff. So, um... I would ask my friends, circle of friends, and get together, and we'd all practice these moves, and, you know, we thought it was cool back then. And then, I was in college, and I got picked up by a group. You guys ever heard the name Funk Phenomenon? Who are they? One more time. Right, America's Best Dance Crew, right. So, they were like a professional hip-hop urban theater at the time. Um... Just a dance group, they got together, they practiced uh, choreography, and then they did these dances. They did concert shows, Celtics halftime shows. If you've ever been to a Celtics game and you've seen those kids dancing in halftime, that's, that's called Little Funk. Um, that's the junior division of Funk Phenomenon. So I joined that group um, back in college. It was 2000, 2002, all right? And uh, that like psychology kind of changed and curbed how I thought about what I wanted to do in my life. The reason I'm telling you these things is because some of you in here might know what you want to do and some of you don't know what you want to do. And I hope that this makes everybody feel better about it. It's okay if you don't know and it's okay if you do know and it changes. It's perfectly fine. I want to save the world with explosions and scars on my face and, you know, talk to women in bars, but I can't tell my real name, but that didn't happen. But I'm just as happy doing this. I have no scars. There's no explosions. I'm safe. You know what I mean? So, and then dance changed my life in a whole other way because after I joined Funk Phenomenon, I was able to kind of tour a bit and get a whole new experience with the dance world. From there, I did like, I did concert shows. I've met a ton of celebrities um, in the last 15 years or so, which was, like, it's just insane. It's amazing. That led me into the DJ world. From the DJ world, I became an MC. And then with all those talents, I kind of formed a company and that company is called Class Universal Entertainment, with a K, because my name is Koopa, also with a K. So smart. Amazing. My job is done here. Right? So, now, I live a fast-paced life. I also am a professional fitness instructor, and I talk to uh, young adults, such as yourself. Um, that's what I do. Very, very busy. I sleep when I'm in traffic, sometimes. <laughs> Don't tell your parents I said that. It's not a good idea. Um, I just got a lot going on, you know? I, I, uh, 
I mean, I'm on Facebook. I am on Facebook. I am on Twitter. Uh, and I tweet just like you guys do. And I Facebook like you guys do. And I talk about my life, what movies I'm seeing, and what cologne I bought. You know what I mean? It is what it is. You know? Shoe game. Hashtag. I'm nice. <laughs> you know, it is what it is, right? Like, why not? It's cool, right? I got a couple retweets. I'm excited. I'm like, yeah. You know? I mean, that's the world now. That's the, the world is social networking and people talking through all these different, like, <clears throat> venues and avenues, which if I could just talk about for a quick second, I'm not going to hit you with the whole like, you know, don't be on them. I think that's a bit harsh. You could be on them, but I think you, you want to make sure that all these things, nobody in here has ever read the terms of agreement on any of these social networks. Am I right? Mm -hmm. I'm right, right? I know I'm right. I never read one either. You skip to the bottom and hit agree, right? And that's what we all do, right? Like, whatever, 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 whatever. <laughs> and it's saying, like, we have right to your firstborn. If you own a house, we're going to take it from you. The government's going to track all your photos. We know where you are right now. But you're like, I just want to be on Instagram. I just want to be on Instagram. <laughs> Where's the agree button? I'm looking for the agree button. So I just want to make sure you guys understand that when you are online with these social networks, like, you are not alone online. I think it's very important you hear that. So all of your expressive remarks and colorful languages, you think your parents can't see, maybe they can't see it, but the government sees it. The government sees it. You know what I mean? A couple years ago, uh, people were trying to figure out how cops always knew where these house parties were at. See, when I was in high school, they didn't know where house parties were at, which didn't matter because I wasn't cool in high school, so I didn't go to house parties. I wasn't invited. Wah, wah. Don't feel bad for me. I got over it. All right, I still see a therapist. I'm doing fine. Okay? <laughs> it's not a big deal. Not a big deal. But nowadays, cops don't have to have any sci fi tech because you guys put it all out there. Like, woohoo! Rager at Bobby's crib, hashtag YOLO, bring it on. Like, it falls in cops' laps. Like, oh, party at Bobby's crib. They check the geotag. We know where Bobby lives. First one in his parents' name. And then you guys are like, oh my God, it's so much fun. And then it's like, cops are there. Like, how'd they get here? It's like 9.30. <laughs> right? Now, I know that I'm talking to a group of individuals who doesn't do those types of things. I understand that. But we all have friends. OK? OK, maybe you. Maybe you. You look a little dangerous. Are you dangerous? Probably. See that? That's how he flexed on me? Probably. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, <clears throat> things I normally talk about are like entrepreneurship. What does that mean, entrepreneurship? Anybody know? <laughs> Make your own business. Right, create your own business, work for yourself, self-employed, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm a bit of an entrepreneur. I generally don't think I fit in that category, even though factually I might, because I think that I have a long way to go before I would claim to be an entrepreneur. That to me has like a lot of weight. Like, like, like I make colorful language happen. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm like that guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I don't feel like I'm that guy because I feel like I'm just working really hard to like pay my bills like everybody else. And uh, I'm fortunate enough to do what I like doing and make enough money out of it that affords my life what I like to do. You know? So with you guys, you have dreams, you have hopes, you have goals. You want to go after those goals. Don't let anybody ever tell you you can't reach those goals. You can't do them. It's too hard. Do you know how much school that is? Like, tell them, yeah, yeah. And tell them, no, I don't know. But I'm still going to try anyway. Like, that's, it's very important to do that. I think it's very important to do that. And that's how I got to where I'm at. And with these social networks, which is how I bring it back around, you just want to be careful because even though you say, just because I wear this clothes or I say these things online, doesn't mean that's who I am. And I'm telling you that. Unfortunately, that's how the world views you, though. And it's very important you hear that. Like, that's how the world views you, OK? If you want to go to Victoria's Secret and then go on Instagram and show the world your universe, like, now it's not a secret, ladies. Now it's not a secret. I could say that 20 different ways, but like, that's what I'm trying to say. So that's what I'm going to say. Like, it's not a secret. Like, cut it out. And whoever invented the kissy face should be like, like, just thrown out. Like, <laughs> Just, just who is that person? Like, who did that? And even worse, who thought it was a good idea to copy it? Like, oh, she did it. <laughs> I promise you, I, ladies, I promise you, there's not one dude ever in your life that's like, yo, you see her kissy face? Yo, kissy face. Yo, but yo, but you see the kissy face? Yo, the kissy face. Never. Look at me. Hashtag never. 
All right? So, like, cut it out. You know what I'm saying? Fellas, selfies, not cool. <laughs> now, the adults are like, I don't even know what he's talking about. Is that, like, a bad word? Like, what did he just say? How come they all know? Selfies, to my adults, are when fellas take photos of themselves. <laughs> of themselves. And put it online. Like, on Instagram. Like, uh oh, Burberry Polo. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like he's like he's like all right, all right, all right, all right. Like I might have done it one time, and I was still tired, so I wasn't paying attention. It was a dare. It was a dare. Do you know what I'm saying? Like selfies, fellas. Selfies for girls is not that much cooler. I could kind of understand it because you know females want to be pretty. You know, you do your hair, your makeup. Like that. like fellas, I don't understand. Like what? You got a lineup? Like oh, fresh cuts. <laughs> like I don't want to see it. Like I don't. No one wants to see it. Selfies of a dude are like kissy faces for a girl. Like, no girl's like, but did you see a selfie, though? You see Jamal's lineup? I'm going to ask him to the prom. I, this is, his lineup was just ferocious. I just can't even, I can't even live without it. Do you know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, and it's, I say it the way because I wanted to, to like, oh, remember when he said this? Because I think that that's, that's how I look at it. I'm like, yo, this is what's going on. These are the trends of 2011 to 2013. It's like, these, you know, dudes, self at the gym, shirts up, like, oh, in, the, in a bathroom. Like, why are you in the bathroom with your cell phone? I don't understand why you're in the bathroom with a cell phone in the first place. It's the bathroom, not the cell phone room. Like, but that's like where you get privacy, like, don't come in the bathroom, I'm changing. I just, you know, I just think about that kind of stuff when you're putting, and then again, you're putting them online, like, do you understand what that means? Like, let me, let me just break it down to you. Personal space, we good? Do I smell bad? Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, W, 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 what does that mean? It means World Wide Web. Anybody catch that? Not my parents' bathroom on the second floor where no one has access to it. Like, World Wide. That's not even like Canton. That's like the whole entire world as you know it. Are we good? I know I was a little close, my breath's bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> World Wide Web. So when you take these photos, and you're like, oh, this is for me, and so and so, like, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's for any cool dude who can hack your computer or hack the world of all these photos and, and tweets. And it's not just photos, but tweets, Instagram, hashtags. Like, you think you're being all like slick, like, oh, no one's ever going to figure this out. Let me put it on the World Wide Web. See how funny it sounds? Like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. How come I didn't think about it? Oh, yeah. Right? No more selfies, right? Never again. Like, whoa, dude, nah, chill, chill. No, no more selfies. Nah, nah, cool. Take pictures of trees. <laughs> Hashtag nature. Yeah. You know, so that's something to think about, the social networks, you know. And then that goes in, like, respecting each other, men and women alike. You know what I mean? Like, this is going to be kind of like a quick left-hand turn. We're like, fellas in the schools, in the, in the hallways, you have no right to put your hands on a female's anatomy ever. Unless she's a certain age and she says it's okay, ever, ever. And if you have to think about it, don't do it. You avoid all possible, well, your honor, I thought when she put her hand up, that meant that I could, you know, so then I, and then she was like, ah, and I was like, wait a minute, and the cops were like, hands behind your head, and I'm like, damn. <laughs> right, if you're like, oh, if you do this in your mind, should I do this, should I not do it, guess what? You shouldn't do it. You shouldn't do it. If you have to think about it, like, you probably shouldn't do it. You know what I mean? If you think about brushing your teeth in the morning, I lied. You should definitely brush your teeth in the morning. If that's a thought, you need to figure your life out. You might be backwards, because that's a must. Do it for me. I got to talk to people all day long, all right? Bless you. Are you allergic to my awesome wit? Okay, I was making sure. Just checking. So, respecting each other. So what that means to the ladies, right? Again, I know ladies in here don't do it. The word class, I don't know where it went. I'm not saying it's you particularly, but we have friends, okay? Let me give you a scenario. If I, okay, need help and I'm on a highway, I'm looking for somebody in what kind of uniform? What, what kind, what, what I'm looking for? A state trooper, a.k.a. a 
police officer, right? Why? Because they're supposed to be there to protect and serve. I know we have a lot of other like definitions of what cops are, but that's what's on, you know, in the almanac, right? So like protect and serve. So if I need help, I'm gonna look for someone in that in that situation. Let me give you a very rare and raw comparison. Ladies, if you're walking around in a certain uniform, you guys catch that? Was that, was that, was that too high? No? Do you get that? You get it? Can we move on? Good. Help me out, ladies. Yes. Okay. You talk to them about their transitioning into maybe college interviews, job interviews. Absolutely. Outside the school corridor for me is the best part about what, my, what I do now for a living. I work with young high school males now <clears throat> on life skills, entrepreneurship, credit scores, how to get a job, interviews, how to tie a tie. And the transition between high school and college, college and in in what everybody says is the real world, is it scary, is it dangerous? It can be, it can be, but not if you're prepared, okay? And how are you prepared? You're prepared by paying attention in most of your classes, at least most. I mean, at all, you know what I mean? But like, at least most, you know what I'm saying? Like, try to learn something, you know, <clears throat> understand what it means to go through an interview. You know, if you're going to an interview, don't take a shower in cologne or perfume. It's too much. Take it down a notch. Okay, don't wear a color that says violet. Like, don't blind me, meet me. Okay? Like, please, I'm trying to get to know who you are and not figure out what this means. Like, it's just too much going on. You know, just pump the brakes a bit. All right, the transition, it's fast sometimes, and sometimes it's slow. The economy goes up and down. There's always no jobs. There's always jobs. You have adults in your face, like, you got to do this, you got to do this. <clears throat> With the accessibility of, like, online applications now, um, it's possible to find a job somewhere, you know. And the interview process is important. How you represent yourself is important. Who you surround yourself with is important. And knowing what you want to do, all right, making choices, decision making. Okay, back to that whole, like, should I do it, should I do it? Maybe you shouldn't do it. If you got friends that are always like, <clears throat> yo, you know, you should do this, you should do that. You should go, wait a minute, why? Why don't you do it? Like, why, why are you telling me to do it all the time? Like, why don't you try it? Because those decisions, unfortunately, some of them get brushed off. Some of them do. But all of them don't. All of them don't. And that reputation that you all have as individuals will follow you through the course of your educational career. Does that make sense? If you're a knucklehead in eighth grade, guess what your eighth grade teacher is telling your high school teachers? That this kid's a knucklehead. So your teacher are like, I heard about you. Yeah, you, the knucklehead dude. And you're like, what? And then of course you're gonna act like what? A knucklehead? You've no shot. Do you know what I'm saying? Don't be afraid to reinvent yourself. All right, if yesterday you want to be the person who picks on people, it's okay, tomorrow's Friday. Stop picking on people, cut it out. It's not nice. People don't like it. Makes me feel weird inside. You know? <clears throat> These are things you want to think about. Um, whether it's entrepreneurship, working for yourself, however you view it. You know what I mean? This is the things you want to think about. Your image, reputation, the respect you have. Not just for authority, but for yourself. For yourself. Respect for yourself. And what does that mean? Do you know what I'm saying? Do you take care of yourself? Are you into your own future? Are you invested? into yourself in your own future? Because you should be, and you want to be. And then if you do that, life can be so exciting, it can be fun, you can make some money, have some laughs, start a life, and it's good. But it's about those decisions you make, you know, today, tomorrow, next month. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah? I worked with the DA's office for about seven years when I got out of college. And that's what enabled me to be here in this situation. I became a community specialist. And in that job role, I was able to create a program that, again, works with young males and females to a degree um, about decision making, respect, goals, setting goals. Do you have goals? You want to make goals for yourself and reach those goals. Two things, long term and short term. You know what those mean? Maybe, yeah? Yeah? So you want to have a long term goal. But you want to reach that long-term goal by completing what? Short-term goals. A career in government. That's a big goal. 
don't, don't obsess over, like, how do I get there? I mean, yeah, think about it. That's the plan, plant the seed. But, like, how do I get there? Well, let me pass this government class. Let me get into that AP class. Let me fill out this resume. Build a resume. Ask for help. Fellows and ladies, ask for help. I got lost twice this morning coming here. I called Catherine so fast. I was like, Catherine, I don't know where I am. First, it's like, I'll figure it out. It's 10 o'clock. I'm pulling up. Like, sorry, guys. I was trying to get here. Like, ask for help. Just ask for help. That's what everybody in this room here is for. I'm assuming that's what everybody this day is for. It's about asking for help. Resources. Some kids don't have these, these, uh, these opportunities. And I'm not saying that so you feel all special. But take advantage of opportunities. All right? There's a good quote I like. It's uh, people will say, uh, you know, like, good luck. And I, I always say, well, I don't believe in good luck necessarily. I believe good luck is when hard work meets opportunity. Does that make sense? I'm going to say it again. So to me, good luck is when hard work meets opportunity. So first you put the hard work in, and when the opportunities come, guess what happens? Boom. Hashtag winning, hashtag whatever makes you feel good about Twitter. It's all right there. It's all right there. And that's, it's an incredible feeling because you know you've earned it. You worked for it. I come from a certain side of the tracks where there wasn't a lot of opportunities for me. Single parent. I was on government aid, and I was able to use college to uh, change my stars, if you will. <coughs> now I'm a happy person, I'm a healthy person, but I'm the same guy, same individual, and now it's your turn to do the same thing. You're not the future, you're that like right now. That's you guys right now. And it's not to put a lot of responsibility on you guys, but if you want to be treated like adults, then you have to behave like adults. And that means you have to act like an adult and make good decisions and be in the right place at the right time and avoid the bad decisions. And the, and the people that are like, you know, that bring you down. You know, the ones who don't support you, lose them. Friends that support you, keep them, find more of them. You know, be a leader, offer your services, help out somebody else. These are things that'll go a long way, a very, very, very long way. And if you do these things, I promise, I mean, I would never say a guarantee, but I can promise you things will come your way. It's, it's, I talk about it for years, trust me. It's like a very cool situation. Now I throw parties for high schools. Like I said, I do Cannes events. I've done Cannes for a long time. I throw parties for celebrities. I've met Donald Trump. I've been down there. I traveled to Chicago, New York, LA, DJing these really, really, really big, huge parties. And it's very cool. It's very cool. We play everything. We play Donna Summer, old school Motown. I play the new stuff, the new boys. We play Little Wayne. We play, all, we play everything, Jay-Z, Kanye, we, whatever, whatever people want. And people love it. People dance. They're excited. And I love it. But I can bring that kind of entertainment to people. So while you're here with these guys, these resources, ask questions, take notes, converse, have a conversation. Say, well, how did you start your job? How did you get in there? What, what, what was hard about it? What was easy about it? If you can go back and do it again, would you do it again? Ask these questions, and they will give you all these answers. And then take them, write them down, put them in your smartphone, if you guys are allowed to have those. And then when you get home, look at them again. Write down your own goals. Answer your own questions. Figure out what you want to do. And then make moves. Then make moves. Hashtag make moves. It's on Twitter. Look it up. I write it like every five seconds. I don't know how much time I have, Catherine. Do you know where I'm at? And did I miss a topic that you'd like me to cover specifically, just so I know? Yeah, ask Coop what it was like. I'm kidding. Are there any questions? Please ask. It's always awkward if no one asks and I'm standing here. You know what I mean? Yes. What is your name? Daisha. Daisha. Got it. Daisha. What was hard about the transition from after college to trying to get a Mine. Mine wasn't as difficult as it is for some people. I had an internship, which is a great point. So utilize internships. Thank you for that, Deja. 
Um, internships. If your school offers an internship, get an internship. If you know a company organization looking for people, we love interns. I love interns. I'm always using interns. Um, so mine wasn't as difficult. So I had an internship with the DA's office my final semester of my senior year when I was in college. And that, um, towards the end of my semester, it was like, you should probably apply for a job. I applied for a job. I was lucky enough to get a job. Does that make sense? So that was cool. Um, some of the challenges are, you know, you get all this information from people, and it's hard to figure out what direction to go in. And, and for that, I would say, you got to kind of trust a little bit of this. you got to have a little bit of muster in there and be like, this is what I want to do. This is what I feel good about. Let me try this. The benefit to an internship is you get to try a career without committing to the career. Does that make sense? It's like practice. So if I wanted to be an FBI agent, let's say that I got to try it in the field, right? And they're like, here's your gun, rookie. Go and save the world. And I would be like, uh... Uh, uh, like, I, this is not what I want to do. The explosion goes off. I, like, cried a little bit. They saw it. It was weird. It was on camera. So, like, you know, now it's like, this is not what I want to do. Well, that allowed me to see that using the internship versus graduating, getting a job there, going through all that hard work, and then finding out that I don't want to do this job. Does that make sense? So that's kind of what can be challenging. Using an internship is very, very helpful um, to avoid that challenge. Um, resume is important. Knowing how to fill out an application is also important. Writing so that we can read it, ladies and gentlemen. That's like you wanna, and if you can't, let someone else write it or type it. A lot of applications are online, so just go online. All right, did I answer your question? I hope so. Yeah, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. Between high school and college, I knew I was in like school government and all that kind of stuff. Um, it was just kind of like I wanted to get out of where I lived, and it wasn't a bad thing. I just it was like if you want to have opportunities in life, you have to go to college. That was kind of the. I mean, there's Volk schools too where you can just go to work after, but for my my path was college. So, you know, I applied to like numerous schools. I got accepted to um, a bunch of them, and then it was figuring out which ones I could afford, which schools gave me more money so I could, again, so I could afford it. School's very, very expensive, and I know that it's tough. It could be difficult for you guys to understand how much money it is, but I know that I did the math. I didn't do the math. I was told the math for like Curry College, and like missing one class tr came out to like almost $200 to miss one class on a Wednesday. Like that means you just took $200 and threw it in the trash. Now, that's like a pair of Jordans. <laughs> do you understand how important $200 is? Like, that's a big deal. So when you think about where you want to go to college, be there. People say like 80% of success or life is like showing up. They're not really that wrong. Like, be in the room. You guys are here today. They're here today. That's a very big deal. Be there and try to avoid these absentee things. You're wasting money. You're wasting your time, their time, and you can't be there for those opportunities. All right? Yes. What's your name? Darlon? Yep. Mm -hmm. She asked um, that I pursued a career in psychology because of college and how does it con connect to my life now, right? Uh, when I took that, I was an undergraduate going for a criminal justice because, again, I wanted to be the, you know, stop SWAT team guy. And then psychology, what it did was it opened up a whole new like, way of like, thinking about things and people. I believe this to be fact. Psychology is in every single career ever, like ever. So psychology is the study of mind, okay? How it works, how it operates, where it comes from. There's a bunch of like theories on it. Different people have different ideas about how it works. But for me, and what I do now for a living is I work with large groups of people and it's important for me to understand the mentalities of large groups of people or individual people when I'm having a conversation not to offend them, right? Always be aware of who's in the room, your audience, how loud you're being, how soft you're being. Those are things that I've learned as a result of psychology and communication. Does that make any sense? So that's how it relates to me now in my world. I teach fitness, communicating, and understanding how you want to lose so many, how many pounds or gain pounds. Understanding people is, to me, is amazing. I, like, I love it. My last message, <laughs> that sounds so warm and fuzzy, from my heart. Um, my last message from my heart, I'm like a super, like I'm like a warm, fuzzy type of like, like, I, like I like, like I miss my guy friends and I love all my 
people that I love and I say it out loud. So the message I would say, or I would try to leave with you because I have a lot. Thank you for making it awkward for me and trying to think of one. But is uh, the world is full of like many, many different types of people. Um, money, height, weight, look, hair length, just all types of people. And the message I would say is that the glass can always be half full. Everything you encounter in your life is going to be how you perceive it. Today could be a half full situation. You could say, wow, I met some good people. I was able not to be in school. I got some good resources. That's a good thing. Or you could say, this was terrible. I hated it. I was bored. This guy didn't say anything I liked. It's how you perceive it. The world is how you interpret the world. It is not how I interpret the world. These are suggestions, these are opinions, and they're my views. But you're going to live it how you live it, and you're going to live it how you live it. And it's important. Own that. Like, own that. You don't got to live anybody else's life. Live your own life. But be able to look at the glass that's this big with this much water and say, well, you know what? It's half full to me. And whatever that is. Every situation, you can find a positive in it. Everything. Everything. And that would probably be the most warm message I could present to you guys. So thank you for your time uh, and your attention. I really appreciate it. Good luck to everybody in their future. And today, oh. thank you. No, my pleasure. Um, of course, uh, has wonderful business, Class Entertainment, Class Universal. Class Universal, yeah. And all of your teachers that you're here with today uh, can get that information. So if you want to contact Cooper. Uh, or hire his company, which I would encourage you to do that as well. I would encourage you to do that as well. So, uh, please, we do uh, 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 invite all of our speakers to talk about their businesses, and, and we'd love that aside that we do love having you here at Grupo. We hope that uh, they do that as well. I appreciate uh, it. One thing I'd add uh, to what Cooper said about internships, I know people in this room here uh, have internships for high school students. There is a high school student that's interning right now at the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, they uh, always take high school interns. A Canton High, in school, uh, Canton high school student interned uh, last spring. And those of our speakers, if that's something that either um, shadowing or internships or jobs, please remember to mention those. And it's totally up to you to follow up. Coop is entirely right. You're going to be on your best game. You have to have a resume. And if you want something, there's only one person that will get it for you, and it's not Koopa. It's definitely not me. Yeah, it's definitely you. So on that note, um, I am on Facebook, Koopa James. I am on Twitter, Koopa James. Uh, if you can't figure that out, just Google it. It's not, I'm not hard to find. H on the end. It's K-U-P-A-H, and then LeBron James. Very, it's very straightforward, all right? They get it. Now, what I will say is this, with all these resources here, if you're going to reach out for an internship or a job or anything, make sure your online presence is reputable, like we mentioned. So go in there and take down all those selfies before you apply to my job to work as an intern. Like, oh, I'm professional, and I want to DJ and make people smile, and I go online, and, like, you know, girls are in the kissy face, and guys have selfies. So, like, you might want to adjust your Facebook before you reach out. And, and your Twitter, like, that's... your Twitter feed, like, keep it clean. It's Just, totally true. That is totally It matters. True. It matters. Yeah, it matters. So thank you again for your time. Good luck. <laughs> thanks, honey. Yeah. I'll, I'll talk. Touch. Please. I know you got to speak. Right. Yeah, thanks. All right, so we're going to have a, a break, but first you have uh, something you have to do. We have three panels. So rows one and two, you guys are going to stay here. Stay <laughs> Rows three and four, you're going to get up with your chair and arrange yourself neatly in front of that panel. Go. And the rest of you, you can sort of divide up here. I am the general manager of the Residence Inn by Marriott right in Norwood here. And um, I've been in this industry pretty much since I was your age. So uh, for me, it started right in the beginning. Um, it was kind of like this, a career day type situation, though. Back in the day, and I don't think they do this anymore, but they, um, I went to work with my dad. My dad managed a hotel in Boston, and um, I hadn't been to Boston much at that age, so I thought it was pretty cool just to be in the city, let alone in this hotel, watching my dad be in the big boss. Um, so for me, I knew right away what I wanted to do. Um, that was it for me, you know, I was probably about 10 years old, if that. <laughs> so 
um, I kind of had a clear path and I had, I was very lucky to have my dad as a mentor to kind of guide me along the way of, okay, this is what you should do now and, and I knew what to do during um, my transition into my career. Um, my very first job was at Friendly's, right? It used to be at Friendly's, it's not Friendly's anymore, on the Avon Brockton line. And I chose that as my first job because my dad told me it was a great opportunity for me to get into a great management program. And so, you know, I really didn't want to wear that stupid uniform. It was pretty silly looking, but I went along with it because that's what he told me was the right thing to do, and I trusted his judgment on it. Um, I did end up going through that manager training program, and I ended up being one of the youngest female managers that Friendly's ever had at the time. I was like 18 years old or something like that, which was pretty cool. Um, and I ended up managing that particular restaurant, which was very cool as well, while I was in college. Um, I just did a couple years of college. Um, this industry, uh, the hotel industry, you know, you could do two years, you could do four years. Um, the bigger city hotels, definitely, you want to have the four years under your belt. Uh, they're going to look for that on your resume. Um, so for me, I just... I was one of those ones that, you know, four years of college seemed like a long time, and I just really wanted to hurry up and get my career going, and I kind of jumped right in. Uh, so I did the two-year college at uh, Quincy College. Uh, they don't have a hospitality program apparently anymore, uh, but there's lots of great hospitality programs. Uh, my brother went to Johnson & Wales, and I have to tell you, when, as a manager, and I see that Johnson & Wales on a resume, it definitely helps, you know, as far as knowing what kind of education uh, they have behind them. Um, so that's a little bit about what I did. Um, I ended up getting married, having a little girl, and uh, took a little career um, dip, and I just kind of took some time to stay home with my daughter and um, decided that I wanted to get back into the industry, and I ended up uh, doing sales because I wanted to be home with my daughter a little bit more. The hotel industry, it's nights, it's weekends, it's, you know, a lot of long hours. Um, so I wanted to take a little bit break for that, so I wanted something that I could have a little bit of a more of a family life. So, um, so I did the sales for a little while. I worked at Lombardo's. You guys all know where the big chandelier, all of that. So I did all that. Um, and then I missed kind of being in charge <laughs> a little bit. And I missed the, the hustle and bustle of the operation side of my career. So um, I ended up becoming a food and beverage manager from there. And then I became a general manager. Um, you know, it was really a quick transition for me. Um, I was in each position probably a couple of years. Uh, one of the best things about the hospitality industry, if you're interested in it, is the fact that you can move rather quickly if you really set your mind to it and you're a hard worker. You've got to be one of those kind of people that are willing to jump in and do whatever is asked of you, and especially in the hospitality industry. Um, if you say, you know, oh, that's not my job, you know, somebody else can do it, um, that's going to kind of hold you back a little bit in the hospitality industry because, honestly, um, you know, as far as a manager goes, you really have to do everything. So if you're willing to do it when you start in an entry-level position, it definitely helps you to move forward and things like that. So, um, so that's a little bit about me. Um, I ended up ho opening a hotel. That was quite an experience for me. And uh, now I'm at the Residence Inn, and we're in the middle of a full-on renovation, and that's a lot of uh, craziness. I'm learning a lot about construction as well as the hotel industry and, and dealing with a lot of angry guests, which um, is challenging for me and, and definitely um, helping me to hone my skills in the hospitality industry. So, um, Is there anybody in this group, by the way, that has any desire to be in hotels or hospitality, restaurant, anything like that, cooking, catering? Yeah. Oh, great. At least one. Raise your hand, anybody. <laughs> Don't be shy. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and let's see. So I know that the keynote speaker did talk a lot about resumes. And um, as somebody that hires people, I can tell you that it's really important the way you lay out your resume. You want to make sure you don't have any mistakes. You want to make sure that, you know, you're using consistent fonts and, and things like that. Um, the way it looks visually is important. You want to make sure that it's, it, it is concise and it is, is easy on the eyes. You know, um, you don't need to get too wordy. 
honestly. You know, somebody that's busy and working 70 hours a week, you know, I don't have time to be reading, you know, real big, long resumes. Um, so you want to keep it, you know, short and sweet, um, keep it concise. Uh, one of the things I am looking for when I'm hiring people is, is a little bit of longevity. I'm finding that a lot of the resumes that I see, um, and somehow I can't believe they really put all that, you know, they are, you know, 17 years old and they have a two-page resume because they've had that many jobs. <laughs> so if you're bouncing from one job to the next, you know, from one month to the next, really um, that's not going to represent well for you, in my opinion, as far as, you know, how you're representing yourself. It's going to make somebody as an employer think you're not going to stay and that they're going to spend a lot of time and money training you for you to turn around and leave in a month and, and that kind of, you know, can be a little bit of a turn off just to kind of give you guys a heads up on something like that. Um, you know, I, I'm looking for like usually at least a year commitment. I know it sounds like a long time, but um, after that, you know, all bets are off, but at least a year. If I see that somebody sticks with a job for a year, I'm more apt to call them for an so, interview. You know, definitely staying on the resume topic. Another thing that you can do, um, you know, Marriott is, is really big. We have this whole thing that we do, it's called Spirit to Serve. Um, but any kind of philanthropy, volunteering, um, this internship idea is a fantastic idea. Any of those things on your resume, again, will show that you're a go-getter. And it will show that, you know, you, you care about things and, and that you take initiative, you know. And I think that that really helps a lot in, in you know, making sure that, you know, you're being noticed, you know. And one of the things I love, the absolutely love, and it's, it's really great when I see it actually handwritten because nobody handwrites notes anymore. But, um, but a thank you. If you get an interview, make sure you're thanking the person that interviews you, um, be it an email or a nice little letter or, or even a phone call to thank. Um, I hire so many people just because they took the time to thank me for the, my time. So it's a little quick, easy thing, but it could be the one thing that gets you on the foot of your foot in the door, you know, instead of the 50 other people that are applying for the same job. So those are the kind of things that mean a lot to me as, as a manager. Um, you know, I only have one little hand. <laughs> that, okay, wrap it up. Okay. Um, anybody? Yes. It is. Yes. Yes and yes. 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 I've gotten, I interviewed actually my brand new front desk agent. I interviewed him, and honestly, it was within an hour I received a thank you email from him. And it just, to me, it just helped show that he cared about people and that he took the initiative, and he's, he's a great employee. Um, most don't. Most don't. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we do, we get a lot of applications. So, um, I work for a company called Hersha Careers, and if anybody's interested in the hospitality industry, uh, go to hershacareers.com. We are, um, you know, we have 116 hotels. Yes, how do you spell Hersha? H-E-R-S-H-A. And we have a bunch of di different uh, brands, not just Marriott. We have Marriott, we have Hamptons, we have boutique hotels in New York City. We have lots of wonderful hotels, um, so great, great opportunities there. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions? We're good. Um, mm -hmm. Because of sports and activities, and they just don't have the time to commit to a job. That's okay. How do you, look into, you know, as far as those go, I mean, they make a commitment to do, you know, sports. Yeah. No, I, I think that's a wonderful thing. And we, we do work around a lot of that, a lot of sports schedules, college schedules, and things like that. Um, absolutely. And we, we have a lot of entry-level positions. So if you don't have a resume or any previous job, I mean, we do hire people at the age of 16. So um, if you've never, if you wear the first job, it's a great opportunity. Um, it's a lot to learn in the hospitality industry. Very nice. Passing it on. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Tom O'Leary, and I'm Executive Vice President of Commercial Banking for Blue Hills uh, Bank. Um, our headquarters are in Hyde Park, although 
our executive offices are um, in Norwood over by Norwood Park uh, South. Um, I don't, you know, if I look at where I, in your seat many, many years ago, it was a very different time. I mean, it was, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. Um, and even in the process of applying for and going to college, it was a very different world. Um, you guys are, are, are kind of living life at the speed of sound. I maybe lived it at 55 miles an hour. My parents probably lived it at 20 miles an hour. Um, and there's a good and a bad to that. I think you know, it's great the information access that you have uh, so instantaneous, it's great, but it's just bombarding too. So um, as I said, um, you know, I, I uh, went to high school in New York. I'm originally from New York. Um, and one of the things that kind of took me on the path that I ended up um, staying on um, was when I was a junior in, in high school, um, I was fortunate enough uh, to um, have my high school send me, uh, along with a few other students, um, to, uh, to Quebec um, for six weeks over summer to study uh, French at Laval University. And while I was there, <clears throat> I met a lot, of, a lot of different people, a lot of different students from primarily Canada and the United States. But, um, you know, you think Canada is right next to us there, just like we are. But I learned at, at that age that uh, there are a lot of different views in the world. Americans are not always loved by other countries. And, and our views are not always necessarily the best views or the, you know, the right views. And, and so it kind of got me on a path where I wanted to be involved in, uh, in international, something international. Um, so I was also uh, fortunate enough to get a, a scholarship that enabled me to come up here and go to Boston College. Um, uh, I would have had to have stayed in the New York area if I hadn't gotten that. Um, and, and so I, I, my major was economics. Uh, and again, I gravitated more toward the international side of economics and took some great courses and had some great professors, including um, you know, learning about the Russian economy when Russia was very different than it is today. Um, it was a planned economy. And that, that it just kind of um, reinforced my desire to, to be involved in something on the international side. Um, so I, I, I got out, <clears throat> and it was a very difficult time. There was, there was as, as you know, oil prices are high today, um, when I got out of school, it was the first what they called um, the uh, oil embargo. The, uh, the OPEC countries actually stopped sending supplies to the United States, and there were huge lines around gas stations, and you had odd and even days of when you could get gas. So the economy wasn't good. It wasn't a good time to come out and look for a job. Uh, I would have preferred to have stayed in the Boston area because I, I figured that I liked Boston without a penny in my pocket when I was at school. It might, might be nice to be there with a few bucks in my pocket, um, but there were really no jobs in the Boston area. So I went back to New York and got a job with a bank that was primarily an international bank, but always with a view of, of coming back to, to Boston um, and, and getting a job here. And after uh, three years in New York, um, I, I got a job at what was then called the First National Bank of Boston um, in the Latin American division. And uh, it was the beginning of many, many years of being involved in uh, international banking. And commercial banking is different than investment banking. Commercial banking primarily is you know, uh, banks taking deposits from people who have surplus funds and lending it to companies and individuals, uh, and, and whether domestic or international. Uh, so uh, I made my very, very first trip uh, uh, in, in 1977 to Panama, um, saw the canal, um, and, and again, you know, just absorbed all of the differences, uh, and, and I, that, that to me was great. I, I really enjoyed meeting people from different countries. I'll fast forward after a career there at, at Bank of Boston for many years, probably traveled to 30 different countries. Um, we actually had an opportunity, uh, our family, uh, we lived in London. My, my youngest daughter was born in London, um, and, and then came back, um, and I don't know if it was, it, you know, it, it was fun traveling. It's not so much fun traveling anymore at the lines at the airport and the security and, and the service on jets even, not like it used to be. It used to be treated pretty nicely. So since then, I, I, I've been more on a domestic banking side of things, and, and with big banks until I got to um, uh, Blue Hills Bank. Um, it's a point in my career where I'm, I'm pretty happy to try to build a, a bank here locally that um, will um, you know, be a force within the community as opposed to being on the international side. Uh, you know, it, it, I think the, that the, the um, uh, Koopa was talking about psychology. And one of the things that, that um, uh, I learned, it was only a half a day seminar, and it was, it, I've, I've never forgotten it. And it's something I think as you meet people and, and you realize their differences, whether it's living in, in, in London and seeing you know, people kind of against 
the United States and different parts and, and kind of understanding where they're coming from. Or if you're calling on companies and trying to sell them something. Um, even We do try to sell loans. Believe it or not, some people don't want to take our money. Uh, they want to take somebody else's money. Um, and, and there was a, a, a course that was, that was given on, they call it left brain, right brain. And basically, you know, it, it, it takes a brain and you make a circle and you put it in four quadrants. And people are upper, upper left, lower left, lower right, upper right. And the, the major difference is left people tend to be analytical. Right people tend to be more creative, emotional. And if you're a very analytical person going to try to sell some entrepreneur who's very creative and, and is just the opposite side of you, you're going to clash unless you understand those differences and try to, to bridge them. So, you know, I, I don't know if it's, it's given. I think it should be given even, you know, in, at your level in high school if, if, if it's available. Um, you know, the other thing that I would say is, is you guys are living, I said, in a time of unbelievable change. Technology um, and, and is, is so rapid. And people who can't adapt to it, whether in the business world or in the corporate world, they're going to fall by the wayside. There was a, a company that had offices right here. I'm not sure if it was in this building, but I can tell you it was in this, in this park that we're in here. That was called Polaroid. Polaroid, it was this building. Polaroid was, you know, innovative beyond belief when they came out with the camera that you took the picture and it came right out, um, you know, from the camera. They don't ex really exist anymore because they didn't keep up with technology, they didn't, they didn't get to the next level, and they kind of you know, rested on their laurels. I think you have to, in, as, whether it's in a career or in, in a business, you have to be ready to remake yourself. Um, you know, I think when you, when you go to, to work, um, you know, I had a boss named Larry Fish who ran Citizens Bank, and he'd say, make sure you're the one who makes the pot of coffee in the morning before anyone comes in, and make sure you're the one who shuts the lights off when you leave. And, and there is that, what, you know, what do we look for people? Intelligence is important, um, you know, where, where, what, what you majored, what you did. When you look at, at how you want to build your resume, I'll tell you one of the things that, that um, people, at least in the banking world, and I think in any uh, business, focus on. Not only the, the, if you had internships or wh where you graduated, what, what ranking and all that, but what did you do? What did you do while you were in school? If you have on your resume that you ran, for example, the, um, the, the, the activities, um, board of the, of the college, and you had a budget that you had to actually work with while you were in college, and you had people who reported to you, um, that's pretty impressive uh, to someone who, who you know, is, is, is interviewing you. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not just the grades, it's not just the internships, you know, it, it's uh, trying to assess, um, you know, kind of what motivates you and, and how, how, what you've done, and is that a kind of a predictor of how you, you will be in the future. I also will tell you that um, it's not always the most intelligent person who's leading, um, you know, companies. It's, it's what you have here, you know, and you need intelligence, but it's, it, you know, as much as anything, it's the drive that you have, it's the determination you have, it's the willingness to sacrifice um, and, and get ahead. There are plenty of people who work for me who are much more intelligent than I am, and there are people who I work for who I know I'm more intelligent than. And, you know, it, so it's, it's that not what's going to win, you know, the race for you, it, it, and that's if you want that. It depends on what you want. But if that's what you want, you know, this combination of what I said, what you've done in high school, what you've done in, in, in college, the question about the athlete, um, well, we just talked to a person who um, was on uh, BC's, um, uh, the hockey championship team, the national championship team, and when you look at, at what he, you know, how many hours he had to put in for, for skating, for, um, you know, practice and games and being away, and, and the you know, GPA that he maintained, you know, that, that's going to impress you a lot more than the person who's done nothing in their extracurricular activity. And so, that, you know, that's important as well. Um, you know, so I think it's a, it, there's a great world that you guys are, are coming into. It's one I couldn't. I'm, I mean, you know, it's going by me so fast. You know, those words that he was saying, I never heard of them. And I have four kids that know all of that stuff, but I still don't know it. Um, you know, so, so, you know, you have to make sure, you know, if, if you have a goal, and it'll merge. Mine kind of emerged from that that first trip to, to Quebec, then um, the, the, the international economics courses that I took, uh, and I just said, I want that. And it, it required some sacrifice. It wasn't easy to be away, um, you know, two, three weeks at a time uh, from, a, you know, my family that was just was starting uh, out, you know, and, and uh, but I still enjoyed it. I, I know it helped put, you know, my four children through college, uh, and it's been, it's been a really satisfactory, you know, kind of life. So um, if if anyone's interested in banking, it's, I'll tell you this also, on the lending side of banking, banks used to have training programs. They don't anymore. 
And so there is a huge gap. You have you know, old farts like me, and then there's a huge gap that, that down to, to um, people who need to come in and do this kind of work. And so I, I know there are opportunities, you know, they're, they're going to be plentiful when you're coming out of college because a lot of people who have been doing this, um, you know, have, uh, have to move on. So with that, any questions? Yeah, I think I, 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 probably more than that, it, it, um, it, it made me want to go back as, as a tourist um, because oftentimes, you know, you might have the weekends because if, if you're there for two or three weeks, you, you would have weekends to, to do that. Um, so, and, and back when I started traveling, the cost of travel was so much more expensive then than it is now that the bank and companies wanted you to be away for a long time to kind of amortize the cost that they've sunk into you being over there. Um, and so you were, you did have weekends. Um, you know, but it also enabled me to say, you know, I, I saw a country and said to my wife, you know, we're going back there sometime on vacation because I didn't have enough time to, uh, to experience it. But it, it certainly whet the ap appetite. And it's not that you didn't. The one thing you always did is you probably got to eat in some pretty good restaurants because you did a lot of business uh, entertaining. Uh, so. I have ADD, uh, or I don't know what it was called when we were growing up. It was uh, something else. I used to go around when I was in high school. I worked with kids. When I was a senior, they brought me down to work with the younger kids and wear them out, basically, because I had so much energy when I was a kid. I was all over the place. Um, what you see now, I'm five or six, two, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. When I was in high school, I was five, two when I graduated. How tall are you? Five six. Five eleven. Stand up. Come on over here. Come on. Okay. Check this out. Right. All right. I was five two. Where was I then? Okay. About just about here. Just about here. So high school for me was a little different. Um, I was active in hockey. I was active in the politics. I was president of the class. I uh, had a lot of fun. I was a bit of a jokester. There was sometimes I spent a lot of time after school for what I had pulled in the class, but it was all clean stuff. There was no real uh, stuff that I had to really worry about, you know, nothing bad, but just usually pulling something on the teachers, pulling something on my friends always got me in a little bit of trouble. Um, but that's because I was kind of always active, always doing something. And so, but I was always looking at different things when I was in high school. And that, that's why I'm, a, I'm what they would call an entrepreneur now. Um, I've done a lot of different stuff in my life because I was always looking to something else. Sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's not. My wife can't pronounce the word entrepreneur. Can you pronounce entrepreneur? Say it. Entrepreneur. My wife can't do that. And I think it's because every time I come up with an idea going, hey, you know what I think we should do? She says, oh, no, I'm going to have to work more overtime for this one because she, is, she, she works. So uh, when I was in high school, I started a film company. I was uh, in, a com in a class they had, it was film studies. Now, when I was in high school, we didn't have this, okay? I couldn't just make a film. We had to get what was known then as a Super 8 camera, and it was a color, and there was no sound. We, were, we, had, we made up stories, and we created uh, movies. And I would show them in my basement. I was a junior at the time, and I would charge money for people to come down and watch me in a rather murderous film because, you know, we were kids. One was called The Machete. One was called Java's Road. It was about, you know, it was a violent thing, but not real violence, you know, not bad, bad stuff. But somebody died in it. And, um, but everybody came. I had my basement in my house was full, and I made hundreds of dollars from just a little film that my buddies and I made. So that was my, the beginning of my entrepreneur career. I mean, entrepreneur is just basically if something that you want to do, you do it. You have a couple of get people here, phenomenal. Hospitality business, I was in that for a while. I actually owned three separate restaurants. And I recommend the hospitality business highly for anybody. 
at some point to go into the hospitality business because it teaches you an amazing tolerance of people and how to interact with people. Am I right? Okay, because yeah, you've got, you know, I had restaurants, you're in the hotel industry, you have the people you have to kowtow to those people, you have to bend over backwards for those people. And if you don't, you don't get the people back. So, and I actually worked for Marriott for a short time. Uh, well, actually, no, about, about seven years, and I was a very, very good Marriott employee. Um, one of my stories. And I was a bartender at, uh, I was in Key West, Florida. I was in Vail, Colorado, and I was in Boston at the Marriott Long Wharf. And I loved the Marriott. I love the hospitality industry. And I said, you know what, I'm going to, this, this could be my career, because it seems to fit for me. I was very good at it. Um, I was bartending and a shopper. You know what a shopper is? Anybody know what a shopper is? When companies such as Marriott have people working in restaurants and such, they hire people that come in. They're like secret service. Okay, they come in and they observe the people behind the bars, people, the, the bartenders, the waitresses, to find out if they're doing the Marriott thing. If they're, they're not stealing, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And they write up a, a complete report. Um, I had been with Marriott for six years at the time. I was um, employee of the month a number of times. I was a very good employee. I was never late, all that stuff. And a gentleman, I was behind the bar at Boston, busiest bar in Boston. I was waiting on a lot of people at, a, at one time, hundreds of hundreds of dollars being rung up. And the shopper said that he saw me put a dollar fifty in the register, but he didn't see me ring it up. Now, this is probably 11 o'clock at night. So I was brought into the general manager's office, no, the food and beverage director's office. He sat me down, and he was an English gentleman. He says, Bill Brian, it, it seems as if you have stolen a dollar fifty from the Marriott. I didn't steal a dollar fifty. Well, it says right here that you stole a dollar fifty. I said, no, I didn't steal a dollar fifty, man. He said, well, this is a professional shopper. I said, I'm a professional bartender. If I steal a dollar fifty, it's not going to be a dollar fifty, I'll tell you that. And it's going to be a lot more than that. I was making a lot of money at the time. I was, it was a very popular bar. I was meeting a lot of girls. So it was a good job. Um, he fired me. I was a little upset. My managers went in and they argued with him and da 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 da. Make a long story short, he brought me back and he said he was going to suspend me because I had such a good record with the company that he wasn't, I wasn't going to lose my job. Thank you very much. That day, I said, I will never let somebody else hold my career in the palm of their hand because he didn't know me and I didn't you know it's one of those instances where I thought I knew my job I was good at my job but this gentleman took this other gentleman's word who didn't know me and do anything and I said okay I'm not going to do that so that day I stopped taking all the Marriott management courses I was involved with and I started putting money away and two years later I opened my own bar so that was just one part of not not saying that corporations are bad. They're not. They're great. But you can run into those kind of incidences in your uh, in your career. So, but the um, so now I'm no longer in the hospitality industry. I actually own a shredding and recycling company. Who's what? Who knows what shredding is? Nobody knows what shredding is. Jeez, that's amazing. How about recycling? Come on. You got to know what recycling is, right? <laughs> well, shredding is, you see this paperwork here? Now, this is a gentleman who has a bank, works at a bank. All those documents that people put into the banks, all the stuff that's in there, usually has to, information on it. It has to go into a container. Companies like mine come and pick it up, and we destroy it and recycle it. So it's, uh, that's what I do now. And it's, you know, it's been a long kind of journey about different things that I've gone through, but... Uh, Again, I'm an entre entrepreneur, and if anybody feels a creative, that's a, a decent way to go. And I own my own businesses, so I'm my own boss, and that kind of thing. A lot of times that's good, sometimes it's not so good. That's me. And I'm also thinking of going on American Idol. So, uh, any questions? <laughs> no? Yeah, well, that will not, probably nothing that anybody here would know. <laughs> so, but thank you for your attention today. Yes. I'm sorry? What is the background of them? Well, it's a company that 
they, that's what they do. You know, they but they hire they just hire anybody. I looked into a company. That's a good, that's a great question. He asked me about the the company that saw me and and accused me of stealing a dollar fifty. Those are companies that they have just they don't have trained people because I did check into that. I actually thought of opening a company for that simple reason that I thought I could do a better job because I was in that industry. But this is just a guy who's sitting at the at the bar at the time observing me and says, oh, I didn't see him ring that up. So I know I rung it up and I know that it, you know, I didn't steal. It just, so it wasn't, for me it wasn't even a question. It, but it was this gentleman's was a question. So he didn't have the training that I had, but he just said, oh, uh, I think he stole. So he didn't know me from a, you know, from an atom. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry? Yeah. And, and that's what, that what's prompted me to say, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to deal with that again. Thank you for that. Uh, I work at a local restaurant. Uh, it's called the Summer Shack in, um, in Dedham. Um, I want to get, kind of talk to you guys about uh, my experience going from high school to college and then uh, into the restaurant industry. Uh, it's definitely uh, an industry I thought I probably would not be in um, in high school. Um, going into senior year, uh, junior and senior year, I had my heart set on being an architect. Um, I was, after, after the end of junior year, being accepted to a couple schools, um, I, uh, I decided to go to UMass Amherst. Um, it was a great school. I had a great time. Uh, I realized I did not want to be an architect anymore. Um, there's a huge course load, uh, a lot of courses that just didn't interest me. Um, so after the first year of Amherst, I left uh, with a bunch of core classes, uh, prerequisites basically done, um, and no idea of where I wanted to go. Um, I knew I wanted to do something creative, I wanted to use my hands, uh, I wanted to design um, and do something original, uh, but I didn't know how to, how to find an outlet for that. Uh, so I took, a, I took a semester off uh, and I got a job working for local friendlies um, where I started working in the back of the house. Uh, I would take deliveries, I would do prep cooking, uh, I'd also work on the line, uh, just cook, flipping the burgers, putting down the fries. Um, and that's kind of where I realized it was fun. It was a fast-paced uh, industry. Um, I could put in a, a good day's work, come out knowing that I made people happy putting out food that they enjoyed. Um, and it was just something I genuinely enjoyed. Um, after talking with some parents, uh, family members, and friends, uh, they kind of, kind of put the idea in my head that maybe I should go to school uh, for culinary arts. Um, so I decided to give uh, college another try. Uh, I went back to Johnson Wales University. Uh, I chose them over like a Cordon Bleu or a CIA uh, because uh, they are an accredited university and I knew that if I decided I hated cooking I would also at least have a degree uh, to leave college with. Um, so I started working there. Um, it, uh, I started going to school there. Um, there I did a couple of internships. Uh, internships are great. Um, it's a no commitment way to see if you enjoy what you're doing or not. Um, you know that after a certain set period of time, you can just walk away from that job, no hurt feelings, um, nothing personal. Uh, but at the same time, you know that you can, I knew that I was having fun. I liked working uh, with the type of people that worked in the restaurant industry. Um, it was a fun, fast paced job. Um, something that really interests me. Um, all the, uh, at that time, at Johnson Wales, I started working at the Summer Shack. Again, I worked the line, uh, uh, steaming lobsters, uh, grilling stuff. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, fast pace, uh, but being from a from scratch restaurant, there's a lot more uh, personal creativity that I can bring to it. Um, and I kind of fulfilled that need for me wanting to work with my hands and create something uh, for someone to enjoy. Um, after graduating, uh, well, first I got my culinary degree. Um, with that degree, I took a sous chef position. Uh, it's kind of like a kitchen manager position. You, uh, you not only cook, um, but you'll make sure all the prep product is, is correct. Um, everything going out to the customers is correct. Um, I continued working uh, through college. Um, definitely something I would recommend. Uh, kind of keeps, keeps you out of trouble. Um, get a nice source of income, get paid for rent, pay down loans. Um, after graduating with my four-year bachelor's, I uh, 
I decided to make a move to the front of the house. Um, it's something that's not always easy. Uh, a lot of times when you're doing your job well, they don't want you to change, um, change where you're going. Uh, but I really, I saw more growth um, perspective uh, in the front of the house, working with guests, uh, being a manager of the restaurant. Um, so I really, really pushed for it. I'm really glad I did. Um, I became a front of the house manager. Um, and I am still progressing. Uh, just recently they moved me up to assistant general manager. Um, and uh, there's always more growth. Um, it's uh, front of the house in a restaurant is uh, there's a set of unique challenges. Um, in the back of the house, you can just put your head down, get to work, uh, make a long day quick by, by working really hard, keeping yourself busy. Uh, in the front of the house, um, one of the biggest challenges you might face are guests, uh, most happy, some not so happy. Um, you can't just uh, you have to be in control of the situation. You have to understand guest needs uh, and their wants. Um, you have to be able to satisfy people, uh, make them happy, um, and, uh, and continue to turn a profit to make your business uh, viable. Um, after, le uh, after years of, uh, of being in a management role or a leadership role, I definitely found that uh, all the accreditations and the certificates that I picked up along my way um, in college, uh, whether it just be Serve Safe, uh, CPR certified, uh, or your mixologist, um, WSCT, there's a whole slew of certificates that you pick up. Um, they're great resume builders. Um, it's one of the things that catches my eye when I do the hiring. Um, I know that uh, I look, you not only look for experience, but you look for uh, certificates, it means that they're actually interested in what they're doing, um, and, it, and it means that they're trying to progress as a person as well. So it's the same thing that I was trying to do. Um, looking back, I know that making this decision to stick with college, giving it another try, uh, definitely made the difference for me. Um, I know where I, I am today is because of college. Um, be, be able to afford the lifestyle that I want, uh, the security. Uh, the job security that I want um, is definitely through the hard work and the time and effort put into college. Um, without, without college, I'd probably still be working a kitchen line, um, and uh, I would not be here today. Uh, as far as advice that I could give you, um, if, you're, if you're not ready for college, don't rush into it. Uh, take the time. Let your adolescence come out of you. Uh, you it's not... I found it wasn't a smart idea to just jump straight into college if you weren't ready to put invest the time and effort. Um, you're only going to be wasting your money. Um, but definitely uh, go there when you are ready for it. Um, anytime you can gain a certificate uh, or a degree, go for it. Uh, it's a great resume builder. Uh, definitely push yourself. Um, hard work and opportunity, like the speaker was saying, do come hand in hand. Um, you, you will. You won't be passed up for an opportunity if you know that you've put in all the extra effort uh, and extra work um, uh, for a promotion or for a raise uh, if you know that you haven't, uh, if, you, if you're just ready for it. Um, look to your family members for guidance. Uh, I, know, I know I did uh, after my first uh, year of college. Wasn't sure what to do. Um, and they definitely advised me to go back. Um, and I found something that I do enjoy doing day in, day, day in and day out. Um, Kind of a, a side note, uh, keep your course books in college. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've gone back uh, to look at my, my textbooks uh, to try to refresh on stuff. Um, it's just something, if, if, you, if you can afford it, keep them. Don't sell them back to the bookstore. Uh, it's definitely a learning experience. Um, anybody have any questions about the restaurant industry, either, either cooking or working in the front of the house? All right, well, thank you so much for your time. I'm Maria Bataya. How's everybody? How's everybody? Good. Where are you guys from? Avon? Milton? Randolph. Oh, I got to. Seniors, raise your hands. Everybody who knows exactly what they want to do with their life, raise their hand. Really? Okay, hang on. I need to ask. What do you want to do with your life? Yes. Okay, she wants to get her degree in psychology and then at Columbia University. And then what else? 
get her master's. Wow, okay. Big goals. I didn't plan her here because I am a psychology major and I'm not doing anything in psychology. So that's a, it's a, so you have a plan, you have a vision, and I'm sure you have a mission underneath that. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. I'm a marketer. So right now I'm what's called a CMO, Chief Marketing Officer for a company, a dot-com company called Alignable. We're just about to launch. It's for local businesses. It's a community for local businesses to network and come together and co-market. Um, but my background, I want to tell you, because I forgot to do this last time, a little bit about myself. So I grew up in upstate New York, way up in, near Utica, if you guys know where that is, in cow country. Um, went to high school at New Hartford High, graduated and went to St. Lawrence University. So you guys know St. Lawrence, it's way up by Canada. And was there for four years. Graduated with my um, BS in psychology and a minor in English. Uh, spent a semester abroad in France. And uh, came out of school, and I did some internships in the summer, which I would, I would recommend for you guys to really try to do something, even if it's, you know, you're doing it for free, if you can afford to do that, um, get into a field and just experience it. So I worked in the school system under a clinical psychologist, and I uh, did some interning with her, and decided, even though I had a scholarship to get my PhD in uh, child psychology, that I did not want to do that. So now, all my, my vision, right, was changed. I didn't know what I wanted to do. But I knew I loved to write, and I knew I wanted to be around people, um, and I liked to talk to people. And um, I ended up taking a job at Junior Achievement. I don't know if that still exists around today, Junior Achievement. So Junior Achievement is for kids that are trying to uh, run their own businesses. And I, uh, I took the lowest level job. They just got me in the door. And I started writing, and I went to the president and said, I really want to do your public relations and your marketing. And I just told him, this is what I wanted to do. And he paired me up with some people that knew what they were doing, and I took some classes on the side. And I started to build my own career by getting mentors, taking classes on the side, learning from others, and really being open to um, you know, listening to what, what others could, to, could teach me. And I want to tell you that. Always be open to learning from others. There's always somebody next to you that you can teach you something. So anyway, long career. I ended up 10 years down in New York. I was vice president of corporate communications and philanthropy for NBC. Who, who knows NBC? Down in New York, right? Um, and then was at IBM before that uh, and came back to Boston and was at a company called Monster.com. You guys know Monster? Yep. Um, might need to know that down the road when you need to find a job, right? Um, so I'm a marketer. So I want to talk to you not about me today, but except to say to you, what you think you're going to do today may not be what you end up doing, but that's OK, right? I want to talk to you about your brand, because that's what I do, right? Marketing is about branding. Do you guys know what a brand is? Yes? No? OK, well, I'm going to read to you a little something. A brand is a set of expectations, memories, stories, or relationships that when taken together account for a consumer's decision to buy that service, that product, or that person. You guys are a brand. And you may be one way in your personal life, but right now you got to make a shift because the way you're going to be in college, to your professors, to your students, the way you're going to be in the workforce, you need to start managing that today, right? And, and that's a big shift. So what makes up of a brand? So when you're thinking about you as a brand, so what's your name? Sorry? Nick. Nick, you are brand Nick. We're going to talk about brand Nick. OK, so Nick, you got to figure out what your vision is. And this is for you, know, you and the workforce, how you want your life to go. And you, by the way, your vision can change, but your vision should be big. So you know, my vision was you know, I wanted to be a child psychologist, right? So. That's a vision. It's going to take me a while to get there. And I think the speaker talked about that. And by the way, it changed. But you know, what were my goals underneath that? My mission, I needed to get an education in psychology so that I could reach that, that vision, right? So do you have any idea what you want to do? None. So do you, what, it, what, what year are you? Oh, so you have so much time. But you know, part of figuring out your vision is figuring out what you like to do. So focus on the things that give you the most joy and that you're passionate about. Because don't pick something just because you think you should, you guys. You're going to hate it. I'm telling you. Pick something you like. Pick, 
something that you feel like you're good at. Everybody does things and they feel like they're in their zone. Pick something that you like to do, right? Um, so anyway, um, the, so the other thing I'm going to talk about is values. So this is important. Values is what do you stand for? So what are you going to stand for to your employer or to that college admissions person? You know, are you a hard worker? Do you value hard work? Do you value being on time? Do you value being, you know, well-dressed? Whatever those things are, those things follow you, right? So just think about that, you know, as you go forward. And you can start fixing that today. So it's not that you have to be one way with your family, but just think about how you want to be seen. And your personality, a brand personality is a little different. It doesn't mean what your personality really is. It means how do people experience you? So when you're in the workforce, when someone asks you to do something, are you a can-do person? Are you easy to work with? Are you fun to be around? Are you the person that just, you know, complains about everything and can't get it done, right? Same thing with work. You have to think about how you're going to approach this part of your life, right? These are some brands, right? You can think about brands in this way, which is Nike, Yahoo, Puma. I don't know. What are the big brands you guys like for clothing? What's the, where do you guys shop? Where? North Face? Okay. Is that big? I didn't know that. How about girls? Where do you guys shop these days? Where? J. Crew? Okay. So those are all brands, right? How about people? So Justin Bieber, you guys, I don't know, is he too young for you? Justin Bieber, he's a brand, right? Okay, Selena Gomez, LeBron James, that might be more on this, you know, right? These guys are all brands. They manage themselves very carefully to get what they are, right? Hard work and opportunity equals success. So you guys are a brand. I want you guys to think about when you're creating your brand, you know, creating about what you want to be, your vision can change. My vision changed, right? I thought I wanted to be this child psychologist. I ended up knowing that I wanted to be exactly where I am. I wanted to be a chief marketing officer. I wanted to be working for a company. I love what I do. I spend a lot of time, like right now, the, comp the product's not even launched, so I spend a lot of time thinking about who are we targeting, how are they going to use us, what's our message and our benefit to them, um, what the personality of the brand's going to be, you know, all those things. How many of you guys think you want to do marketing or advertising or PR? Anybody interested in this field? No? Yes, that's okay. How many of you guys use, have an iPhone or do tweeting or, you guys tweet? Yeah. Do you guys do Facebook? Yeah. What else is big, you guys? Instagram, right? I heard from the last group. I'm going to tell you something about marketing. There's a whole new career in marketing called digital marketers, okay? And Companies are paying a lot of money to get people on board that are, you know, right out of college, right out of school, that understand how to talk to people on Twitter, on Facebook, on Foursquare, on Instagram in a relevant way. So if you guys are interested in all this technology, there's actually, and you think it's fun, there's actually some careers around this that you guys could actually start to focus on. And they're making a lot of money, and it's a great career to have. Any questions for me? So my final thing, and I think you've heard this from a few other people, but listen, please clean up your social media accounts. Take off those pictures of you guys that are kind of racy or you're drinking or people look. Admissions counselors look. Before you get an internship, people look at these pages. Just clean them up. They follow you everywhere. Untag yourself if you can. Talk to your friend and get your pictures down. Don't substitute all these online friends with in-person meetings. If you're trying to go to college, get that in-person meeting with that admissions counselor. Sell yourself in person. It's a very different experience. Network with people in life. Your network is going to be what helps you over time. Your real network, not your online network. It has to be, you know, you can take a relationship you have and pull it online, but you need to have that real relationship. Join groups that are close to the areas that you're, you're interested in pursuing. So if you're interested in advertising, join an advertising group and go to the meetings. You need to meet people in person. Sell yourself. You guys have to get on your own team. I'm going to tell you through life, people are going to tell you you can't do it. You, you know, it's too big of a goal. It's too big of a leap. You guys have to sell yourself at everything you do, and you have to believe in your own vision. Because if you don't believe it, nobody is going to believe it. Um, be old-fashioned. I mean, this whole, everything's gone so digital. 
I love when I get a handwritten thank you from somebody. Because, you know, everyone just shoots you a quick email or a text or something. That makes you stand above the crowd. I actually had somebody that wanted a job when I was at NBC, and they actually came to the office and they hand-delivered a thank you. Well, that person got the job because I thought, man, that person really wants that opportunity and is going to work hard for me. Um, be courteous and prepared. Before you meet with somebody, please Google them. Do LinkedIn. Find out about them. Know who you're sitting in front of. See if there's some kind of connection you two share, um, passions you share. You can find out a lot about people. So just try to be prepared in those meetings. And just, you know what, you guys, follow your passion. That's all I'm going to say. You have to like what you do. Cause if, and if you end up doing something you don't like, it's not the end of the world. Change it. People change. I think they say people have an average of three careers um, in every lifetime. But, you know, just make a decision and go with it. And if you don't like it, you can shift. That's it. That's it. I'm going to turn it over now. We'll take questions afterwards. All right. Hi, guys. I'm Steve. I'm the uh, head athletic trainer at Alvarez Ames High School. Um, I've worked there for the past two years, and I also work in conjunction with Marathon Physical Therapy, which is a, a PT clinic that we have in a whole bunch of locations, uh, Norton, Newwood, N Norton, Newton, uh, Norwood, and Dedham. Um, I graduated two years ago from Springfield College um, in their athletic training program. Um, so, you know, I have a pretty good idea of where you guys are sitting right now, since you know, I'm not really that much older than a lot of you. Um, basically, as the head athletic trainer at Oliver Ames, I have a lot of responsibilities. Um, you know, initially, it's, it's the initial diagnosis, um, management of injuries, the return to play guidelines, um, and ultimately, like, the rehabilitation and getting them back on the field. But it's not just that. It's also the prevention of injury, whether it be wrapping, taping, um, the preseason uh, pre screening, stuff like that. Um, so basically, anything that involves in any of the athletes and any of the seasons, um, I'm dealing with them. So, uh, like many of you guys, I really had no idea what I wanted to do um, going into my senior year of high school. Um, so I kind of sat down with my mom and my dad um, and some of my friends and kind of talked to them about what I wanted to do. And ultimately, I kind of settled on two things, that I, I really liked sports and I really liked helping people. Um, so realistically, when my mom suggested athletic training, you know, kind of merger of the two, it really kind of made a lot of sense. So I applied to a whole bunch of programs and ended up settling on Springfield because I, I really liked what they had, for, had to offer for a program. Um, and I kind of went with it from there. So I kind of want to give you guys a background of the actual program and kind of what you do each year to kind of give you an idea because I'm assuming most of you guys don't really understand or know what, what you do actually um, in the program once you're, um, once you're accepted. So athletic training is a four-year undergrad degree, which is great because after four years, you come out with a degree in athletic training. You ultimately have to take a test and pass uh, to be certified to, to practice in whatever state you practice in. Um, but it's great because you, you can go in four years and you're already out in the medical field and, and helping kids. Um, the other thing is you have a great hands-on experience right away. So starting your, your freshman year, you're going to be working with um, some athletes and your classmates, but you're doing hands-on stuff. So you know, starting freshman year, we learned all the taping and bracing that you're going to use for the rest of your career. Um, you're learning all the emergency medical uh, stuff, so the, all the EMS stuff that you're going to use for the rest of your career. You're learning that freshman year, um, which is great because you're, you know, you're not going and taking a whole bunch of prereqs. You're not taking a whole bunch of boring science classes. You're taking you know, classes that are specific to athletic training, um, which is kind of my next point, um, is that throughout your whole um, four years there, almost all your classes are going to be geared towards athletic training. Um, so you know, if that's something that you wanted to do, um, you know, it's great because you're, you're not taking, you know, a science class or a math class that you hate, you're taking a class that you know at the end of it it's going to be something that you're going to be using for the rest of your life. Um, which, you know, it, makes, it makes taking the class a lot easier. It makes um, actually going through and, and um, you know, trying hard more meaningful. Um, you know, the, the best part too is that you're starting your sophomore year, at least in our program, you start working with teams. So my sophomore year I worked off campus. I worked at Elms College and I worked at a prep school in, in uh, Connecticut. Uh, my junior year, I worked with the gymnastics team and the basketball team. And my senior year, I did um, a rotation with the football team. And then I did a, a rehab rotation where we worked with just kids that had been declared out for the season that needed some kind of rehabilitation. So, you know, it's a great experience that you're, you're getting basically three years of free experience um, while you're at the school, kind of practicing every, everything that you learn in the classes um, so that by the time you graduate, you really feel prepared to go out and, 
can actually practice your um, your craft, which is you know, athletic training. Um, you know, and another thing, you, you can work at any level, which I really like. You know, right now I work as a high school athletic trainer, but you can work at the college level, you can work at D1, D2, D3, you can work at the professional level. You know, it's really whatever you want it to be. Um, you can kind of guide your career that way. Um, and, it, and it's not like you're stuck, stuck in that position. You know, I can start here, um, I can go back to school next year, and then kind of gear my way towards the professional level. If that's something that I want to do, if I want to stay in high school, I can do that as well. You know, it's, it really, it's really up to you. Um, you know, really, I feel like there's no better feeling for me personally than seeing an athlete get hurt and then that whole process of them getting back out onto the, onto the court or onto the field. Um, and really the, the feedback you get from the athlete and that bond that you have with the athlete, um, you know, because you, you've become a part of their, you know, their sports season, their, their life, um, and ultimately making them better. Um, you know, there are several reasons why I really like my job. I kind of want to share a couple of, you, a couple of those with you. Um, you know, like I said, there's always room for improvement, but it's not just, um, you know, improving yourself going from, you know, high school to professional level, but it's just general improvement. So there's always classes, there's always new stuff being, you know, studied and not, not necessarily invented, but discovered as far as improved healthcare. So, you know, you, you can take classes, you can take continued education stuff, so you're always bettering yourself as, you know, a professional. But, um, you know, you can also go back to school, and this is one of the few professions where you can go back to school for free and get experience for free by working as a graduate assistant or getting an internship for the college. So you can go in, you can better yourself educationally by taking, you know, getting a master's in nutrition or education, whatever you might want to be, might be interested in, but then go on and work with whatever sports team they assign you to. You're doing that all for free. Um, whereas a lot of other, other schools or professions, you know, you're going to have to go to grad school, but you're paying yourself, you're paying your way through that. So, it, you know, it is a great opportunity to, to really better yourself. Um, I really personally like it because every season is different. Um, it's constantly changing. We have, you know, the fall season where you have football and you have field hockey and soccer and, and cheerleading and whatever. And then you come to the winter season, it's completely different. You have wrestling, you have basketball, you still have cheerleading. Um, we have ski team, anything like that. So it's, it's, it's never the same. You know, you're, you're always doing something different. So there's, there's really never a dull moment, you know. By the time you get, to one, get through one season, the next season's already starting. So Monday... You know, we're starting the spring season already. It feels like yesterday it was the fall season. So, you know, it really does keep things fresh. Um, different athletes, different injuries, um, different kids. So it, it really does, um, you know, keep it fresh. You know, and ultimately, I feel like my job isn't really a job because, you know, I do do the, you know, the injury diagnosis. I do the rehab and stuff. But once I'm done with that, I'm watching sports for a living. I'm, I'm watching practice. I'm going to the games. You know, I'm invested in those teams. So it's it's really not, it doesn't feel like work a lot of times. It just feels like I'm, you know, hanging out with a bunch of high school kids, watching them play basketball or whatever it may, might be. And, you know, ultimately it's just, it's just great to be a part of the team. So you're, you're there from the preseason. You're there throughout the season helping them with their injuries. Um, but then you get to the benefit of traveling with them to, to the postseason. So, you know, last year our, our football team made it to the Super Bowl. I got to go to Gillette Stadium with them. You know, it was, it was just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun for the kids, but it's a lot of fun for me too um, to be a part of that. Um, athletic training as a profession itself is fast growing. So, you know, only a couple of years ago, there weren't high schools that had athletic trainers. Um, you know, you can talk to your teachers or anything. You know, they, it just wasn't something that schools felt was necessary. But now, if you go to any high school, you're going to probably find an athletic trainer there, which is great. Um, and it's, it's really great for you guys as, you know, student athletes. So it, it's continuing to grow, but it's not just in the, uh, the high school setting. You know, it's, it's colleges. It's alternative places where it might be in the army um, or in um, you know another profession you might think of, not think of. Like I had a friend who worked with the Rockettes as their athletic trainer, which is kind of a, an interesting thing because um, it's not something you would normally think of or associate with an athletic trainer. Um, you know, almost every school, like I said, is required to have an athletic trainer. Um, you know, if you if you even are remotely interested in it, I would suggest trying to talk to your athletic trainer. Um, we're pretty laid back. You know, we're used to working with kids. So if you have an interest, go and talk to them. Ask them what their job is like. Ask them if, they, if you can shadow them. You know, even if it's just for a couple hours, you get a, a real feel for, you know, what their day is like and what, they, what they're doing after school. Um, if you're not involved in sports, you know, if you are involved in sports, you probably have a pretty good idea of, of what they're doing. Um, you know, I, I just have a, a few take-homes from college since, you know, it's pretty fresh in my mind. And, um, you know, hopefully pretty soon will be something that you guys will be experiencing. Um, 
you know, the biggest thing for me was, was time, time management. You go from a real structured living situation where you're going to school for seven hours a day, um, then going home to your parents telling you to do the homework and, you know, feeding you and everything, to a college where you're really, you know, pretty independent. Um, so, you, you know, you don't have that same structure. But you have all the, all the same time to really do whatever you want to do, which kind of takes me into my next point, which is everything kind of needs to be in moderation. So, you know, you, you can't go out all the time and not do any of your homework, but you can't spend all your time doing homework and, you know, never enjoy, you know, your life in college. You know, everything kind of needs to be in that balance. And, you know, that way you will be successful. Because if you do too much of anything, you know, it's never a good thing. You know, off of that too, college really is easy. It's not hard. You know, it's not everything, you know, it's not what everyone makes it up to be. You, ha you go from school where you're there seven hours a day to, you know, you might on a Wednesday have one class for that whole day. Um, but that also gives you that whole rest of the day to do whatever you want. Um, so if you take care of what you're doing and do your homework and everything, um, you have plenty of time to really prepare and do well, but also have, have a great time with school. Um, you know, ultimately, it's just, it's just having fun with uh, what you do. So if, if it's something that you like, you want to pursue it, um, you know, work hard in school, have fun with school, it's, you know, it's a great time. And it's, it's, you know, a lot of people refer to it as the best time that they have, the best four, four years of their life. Um, so do you guys, any questions in particular about athletic training or, you know, school itself? Any questions for the two of them? No? All right, thanks, guys. For those of you who don't know, my name is Dan Poor. I work for Universal Tech Institute. That's the big building we're in right now. Um, I do marketing, and it's a funny way I got here, but one of the things I found, anybody know what marketing is? No, I didn't either when they asked me to do this. I really didn't. Um, it's like talking to good people. Yes? Uh, not really. I don't work for myself. That way, because I'm, I'm not a nice guy. I wouldn't want to work for me. <laughs> no, um, entrepreneurship's like um, making your own business kind of thing. Um, marketing is like getting people to realize what a product is, I believe. I don't even know, because I'm not very good at it. Um, Anybody know what a Nissan Skyline is, GTR? Yeah, we got one gear head in the back. Anyway, it's a, it's a, a $200,000 car from Japan that's a right-hand drive. You guys know what a right-hand drive means on a car? It means the steering wheel's on the other side of the car. Because in Japan, they drive on the opposite side of the road, much like England. So a guy sent me an email this morning, right before we started, asked if um, the New York Auto Show is the end of this month. I go to all kinds of car shows, drag racing events, anything. Drifting, anybody like drifting events? Yeah, that's what I'm into now this year. I sponsor a drift car. I'm going to uh, see if I can get the company here to pay for my license so I can get a drift license because that would be pretty cool. Um, I have my own drift car and stuff. Um, you, you tell people, oh, you have your own drift car? They, they're thinking like it's a NASCAR million-dollar sponsorship. No, it's a 240SX. It's really rusty. <laughs> but you take it and you know, what drifting is is you go and you spin around in circles. and It's kind of like pro wrestling. You don't win by winning. You win by putting on the best show. So the closest you can get to a wall or another car, the more points you get, the more points you get. Guys vote on it and they, they tell you if you win or lose. That's like the new racing nowadays. Back in my day, we always had racing. What happens is racing has so many rules and regulations now, it's tough for somebody your age to get into it or to start it. So drifting really doesn't have that many rules yet. You gotta wear a helmet and that's about it. So other than that, you don't have to have a race suit or a fire suit. So you can get into it with a rusted out piece of junk car and you can go out and race on weekends. So it's kind of fun. Even drag racing now has a lot of rules because, you know, we want to keep you safe. But so far, drifting is not that many rules, which is kind of fun. <laughs> anyway, $200,000 car. Asked me if I want to pick it up in Long Island and drive it into New York City for the, for the auto show at the end of the month. He doesn't want it. The owner does not want it towed, doesn't like tow trucks, doesn't like them strapping it down and hooking from underneath. So he wants to, wants to know if I can just pick it up and drive it. So what do you think my answer was? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, inline six twin turbo, 200 mile an hour car. You want me to pick it up and take it through the streets of New York City? Yeah, I'll be there. That's what I'm talking about. That, that's one of the perks of my job. I was an auto tech. I went to high school, not very good at it. Uh, all you guys going to college? Anybody going to college? Yeah, I thought so too. It turns out not so much. Um, I, I really hated it. <laughs> I got out and after four weeks I quit college. I was like, this sucks. I quit. So I left. Um, I, I'll, t I'll talk to you how it's real. I did not like it. Um, <laughs> it was not for me, so I left. Um, I ended up, I went to a different, 
college for automotive tech where I learned hands-on. One thing I'm really, really good at is fixing cars and trucks. I really, I always loved being around cars, trucks, motorcycles, dirt bikes, anything. Anybody else like that? Gearheads, we like to call you. There's a rednecks. We got any rednecks? No rednecks in Milton and Avon? Guys take jacked up trucks and get them stuck on trees. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Wearing my flannel shirt, go down there. Yeah, go out in the mud hole. <laughs> yes, I look like Larry the Cable Guy. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so I, I left that. I started turning a wrench after college, and I always did it until I got recruited here to teach. And then when I was teaching here, I ended up, I managed a couple of courses and stuff, and then they, they asked me to be a marketing guy. I said, hey, we need somebody for marketing. What that means is I have a truck and a trailer. When you guys came in, anybody see the big freight liner with the race car trailer behind it? Yeah, that's my rig. I drive that every day. Not with the trailer all the time, but I drive the big rig. And I take that and I drive around. I go to high schools and racetracks. Tonight, as soon as I'm done this, I'm off to Bangor, Maine. It's about a six-hour drive. I'm not looking forward to that, but it's part of the job. Get up there. Um, they're doing a Skills USA competition up there, so I'll be up there tomorrow. Anybody involved with Skills USA? I know anybody? Oh, your schools don't compete? Oh, that's too bad. Skills USA is a lot of, a lot of opportunities, a lot of free scholarships. Uh, we give away a lot of money to that, to that stuff. Um, so I'm off to support that, and then it's Portland, Maine for a boat show sa Saturday. And then Sunday, I think I'm off, so that'll be cool. I'll probably find myself at a racetrack again because we're getting ready to open up north. Um, so what I do is I go around to high schools and stuff, and I do marketing. Most people change careers about three times in their life. So you may start out wanting to be something, and it turns out you could go to school for it or something, and you can end up changing careers. It just happens. Don't be discouraged. Uh, the other thing is, is failure. I fail all the time. It's what I do best. <laughs> um, if you fail, just move on to the next thing. It doesn't really matter. When you're young and you guys like fail a test, you're going to hear these ladies talk about a couple of different things they failed at. Uh, not bad way, it's just... It amazes me, but <laughs> if you fail when you're young, you get your first failure, you think, oh, my God, it's the end of the world. I'm going to end up in prison and this, that, and the other thing. It, it's not that bad. 20 years back, you look back, you go, oh, yeah, I failed that three times. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you move on. Um, it's it's kind of different. Any, so what's your favorite car? Does anybody have a favorite car in here? Anybody drive yet? You guys are all youngins. Where's the seniors at? we got a couple guys in the back. You guys drive? What kind of cars? What kind of car would you drive if money was no object? I guess I could drive anything. Yeah. Lamborghini. Lamborghini, which one? I like Oh, very nice, very nice. Well, are you, sir? What would you drive? Uh, Money's no object. You're making all the money in the world. Yeah. Bugatti Viron? Yeah. yeah. How about you, sir? Uh, Outstanding. 429 Boss engine? Yeah, you just nod your head and say, yeah. Smile and nod is something you guys are going to learn in life. When people are talking and you don't understand what they say, smile and nod. It gets you far, trust me. I've lived in other countries. It gets me everywhere. <laughs> I was in the service, and I've been in quite a few countries when I was in the Army. And uh, You just smile and nod. <laughs> people will talk and talk, and they're blabbering on. You're just like, yeah. Or if they look mean, just go. It's pretty universal. So now in the business world, when I'm here, like I said, I didn't go to college. A lot of people I work with did, and they talk about marketing and this, that, and the other thing. I just smile and nod. Like, you want me to take the race car where? Okay. I'll do that. <laughs> Anybody know what they want to do when they get out of school? Yeah, nobody ever puts their hands up at your age. Everybody asking you that, do you? Outstanding. So you, if you know what you're going to do, it's a beautiful thing. I always knew what I wanted to do. Yeah, she's just going to be late getting there. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, if you don't know what you want to do, that's okay, but you must be hearing it from just about everybody you talk to, aren't you? Especially seniors. You know, Christmas break, everybody's like, so what are you going to do? 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 Uh, I got two kids, uh, 19 and 22, and, and my daughter knows what she wants to do, which she's lucky. Boy, he still doesn't know. He doesn't. I, I know he's moving soon because I'm selling the house, and I told him that. <laughs> I told him. I said... I said, I'm, I'm, I'm selling the house, son. And he's like, yeah, I know. You keep saying that. I'm just telling you, it's this summer, so you need to do something. I don't think the new owners are going to want you here. So <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do, but you're not coming with me either. <laughs> oh, you take, you take Nicole, but you won't take me? That is correct. You're 22. Good luck. And uh, you, got, you guys will reach that point sometime. Mom and dad will be like, no, nah, you're done. Beat it. <laughs> Anybody there yet? Anybody got kicked out yet? <laughs> hey, what are you laughing at? Wait till it comes and they tell you that. <laughs> or they tell you they're selling the house. 
Oh, where am I going? I don't know. <laughs> it's just funny. It's one of those life's things. Well, that's all I got. Anybody got questions about cars? Yes. Hmm? Not about cars? You got to put on your salesman shoes. There's two ways that's going to go. Either you know what you want to do and you really want to do it and you think it's right, or you know what you want to do and they know what you want to do, but their wisdom is telling you it's not for you. Um, they may be right or you may be right. I, I, one of the things where I always say, especially here at the company, is dream it, learn it, live it. But I've heard people tell me things that they tell me what they want to do, and I'm like, ooh, and I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> but the worst that can happen is if you try it and it's not right, but you, gotta, you do have to get your parents' support. To just tell them you're going to do it and it creates a huge fight, that's kind of problematic, so try to find a way around it and maybe do it in the background or plan on doing it a year later, try something their way, and then move on. But there's, it's tough. Yes? I ask myself that every day. <laughs> I just got asked. Um, Sometimes a college education and test scores and everything, I know it's drilled in your heads and I shouldn't say this, sometimes it doesn't really mean anything. When you guys get to be my age, what you did in high school has absolutely no effect on your life. It, it's amazing. Um, I know it's drilled in your skull that you have to do well, to have to do well, have to do well. You can change. Uh, like Cooper said earlier, you can change your life midpoint. I, I've been locked up. I've been um, in a lot of trouble. Uh, it, it changes. It does change. You can change midpoint. It doesn't mean what you are is what you are. Like, say, like, right now you could be a troublemaker or something. You can just change. It's all it takes. So, yeah, somebody may see the value in you, too, and find out what you can do just because you don't have something on paper that says you can do it. You really can do it. You have to speak up. Well, I went, I went to a community college, and I didn't like it, which was a typical, I had, you know, history and math, and I hated it, so I left. I went to a, um, a competitive school, not universal tech, but much like us, where you do hands-on learning and stuff. Sometimes you may fail a test. So let's say you take your SATs, and they're not that well. Just move on. It, it doesn't mean as much. When you get to be, like, 30, like, people my age... I'm a little north of 40. We don't remember what our SAT scores were. It doesn't really matter. And yes, I did take SATs even though I dropped out of community college and everything. I actually did very well on them, but I don't, it doesn't matter. Um, you're going to fail. And one of the, part of the thing you guys are going to learn that failure is just, it's just something else. It's another step. It's not that important. Yes, we have a question in the back. One of you guys? No? You just like cars? All right. All right. I'm going to pass it on, so I can, I'll talk to anybody afterwards. When we have lunch, you guys will have a chance to network with everybody, okay? Everybody nod your head, smile and nod, right? Here we go, yeah. All right. Um, my name's Lauren. Um, I work for Marathon Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, and I know you guys already talked to somebody from there, but hopefully we have, we're we telling you different things. We have, we have different stories. Um, I am the... Athletic trainer at Mansfield High School right now. Um, did I always want to be an athletic trainer? No. Um, growing up, I wanted to be a marine biologist, and by marine biologist, I want to be. I want to train dolphins. I want to train whales. I want to like work with penguins and be all cute and stuff. And my mom met me one morning with a stack of papers. I kid you not, this big, and she was like, "Marine biology, read it." And I read it and I researched it and I learned that maybe. One in a hundred people get to be get to actually do what I want to do. The rest are all taking samples out on boats for six months at a time, working rain or shine, making little to no money, um, and that was definitely, definitely, definitely not what I was cut out for. So, number one, if you are thinking about or know what you want to do, research it, learn everything about it, because you may not agree or like or your idea or perception of it might be a little bit different. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, Secondly, I lost my train of thought a little bit. Oh, yeah. So, 
with that being said, I was also a three-sport athlete in, in high school. Um, if I wasn't doing work, or I wasn't hanging out with my friends, I was always, always working. I, I played lacrosse. I wanted to play lacrosse in college. I knew I wanted to play lacrosse in college. I was tournaments in the summer, tournaments on weekends, tournaments at, on weeknights, in the gym on my off days. Um, practice, I also played field hockey and ran track. So um, if I wasn't practicing, I was either doing work or hanging out with my friends, you know, just whatever. Um, my junior year, I got hurt. I had a full reconstructive surgery on my ankle, spent a lot of time in PT, a lot of time in the athletic training room. And I was, and I was observing a little bit, and I was like, man, this is kind of cool. So I asked my athletic trainer if I could follow him around a little bit. Um, he also worked. He's a, also a part-time PT. I graduated from Nord, by the way, if any of you guys are wondering. Um, and, I mean, I loved it. I loved what he did. He, he sat there. He had conversations with athletes. He just hung out. He watched sporting events. It's just kind of it's like what do you not like about that are any of you guys interested in anything along in sports medicine PT AT kinesiology exercise science anything you are a little bit um, it's definitely a tough road and another I don't, I don't want to say I have regrets because I don't have regrets but if I could do something different I would open up my options I, I knew I wanted to play lacrosse so I only um, considered colleges that were recruiting me um, I, I wa stayed in Massachusetts I feel like it would have traveled a little bit more um, and I ended up going to Merrimack and Merrimack's Division 2 it's very expensive it's private it's up in, in the North Shore and Andover um, and I loved it I loved every second of it but it was very very time-consuming um, what I didn't do is I didn't research athletic training um, when I got there it was a huge wake-up call um, I it was a medically based major so every class that I took had a lab I was in class from 8 to 2 while all my friends were sleeping in going to one or two classes a day and then coming home eating and going to sleep taking naps I was in class from 8 to 2 then I was going to we had to do 800 hours of just athletic training work a semester then we had to do 75 hours of PT 8 hours of ortho it was just I was going 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 and if I wasn't doing that I was at lacrosse practice or I was in the weight room um, preparing for lacrosse season so it was very, very time consuming. So after my sophomore year, going into my junior year, I made the decision to transfer from Merrimack down to Bridgewater. State school, very much more financially reasonable, and it was only Division Three. So what they were asking for me for lacrosse um, was a lot less. And I knew that I worked so hard in high school, I did not want to give up playing a sport. And it is manageable to do both of them. but. Um, I've said before that if I could go back and do it again, I would either do a four-year college, um, just exercise science and then get my master's in athletic training and play lacrosse, or I would just nix the lacrosse and just do all four years of athletic training because it is very, very, very time-consuming. Um, got out of college. Um, in college, I did a couple internships. I did an internship at Notre Dame. I did an internship at the University of Maryland. And then my year out of college, I went down to the Naval Academy and did an internship there. Um, the experience was awesome. I got to work with the football team. I traveled everywhere, um, learned a lot. But the way that it was set up, it was just very different. They were very regimented. The doctors ran most, most of the show. Um, I didn't really get to do a lot. I was a glorified water girl. So it turned me off from athletic training. And I came back here, and I ended up my, my old athletic trainer um, works for Marathon as well, and he kind of hooked me up with a job. But I... I did it. I didn't do athletic training. I worked. I did performance enhancement. I worked with high school athletes, um, prepared them for season, prepared them for college. Just did a lot of strength training, and I also coached lacrosse, uh, lacrosse up at Anna Maria College, and I've loved every part of it for the last two years. And this past summer, position opened up at Mansfield High School for athletic training. They asked me if I wanted it because I was already certified, and I was very hesitant, but I took it and. It was the best decision I ever made because I have never, ever, ever been happier in my life. Um, I just, I go there. The athletes are awesome. My job is awesome. I, I hang out with them I'm so much more than an athletic trainer. They come to me for advice. They come to me with their problems. They come to me with help with school. Um, I get to hang out and watch sports. My basketball team is playing in the state championship this Saturday. It's just, it's just, it's awesome. It's an awesome, awesome job. But looking back on it, it was a very roundabout way of getting there starting with high, high school. I, got, I barely broke 1,000. We were out of a 1,600 on our SATs, but I barely broke 1,000. But I worked my butt off, had a good GPA, had a good resume with all my jobs and internships and um, schoolwork. And I ended up getting into college. I got out of college. 
I'm not a standardized test taker, and a lot of people are not standardized test takers. We have to take the Board of Certification even to become a certified athletic trainer. 5% pass rate on the first time. It's crazy for anybody. It took me three times to pass this test. Moral of that story is don't give up. Keep trying, keep, keep trying, keep trying. And things may not fall into place the way that you want it to, but don't get discouraged. If you want something bad enough, you can get it. I'm competitive by nature. I've been an athlete my whole life. If I don't succeed at something, it's just it, that doesn't flow with me. I, I'm competitive. I have to finish what I start. So just for the mere fact of my competitive nature, I kept taking that test so that I could pass it because I needed to finish what I started. So um, like I said, life's going to throw you challenges. You just got to learn how to accept it, get over it, and keep trying. Any of you guys have any questions? No? You guys are a quiet bunch, huh? All right, then. Thank you. It's because they're well-behaved because most of them are from Milton, right? Who here is from Milton High? Basically all of you. I graduated from Milton High in 2005. I lived in Milton my entire life, born and raised up until college. From then on, I haven't been home, which is probably a good thing to my parents. But um, my name's Jo Marie Berry. You might know my little sister. She goes to Milton High. She's a senior. Jennifer, Jen. I think they call her Gumby, too, or something. Um, I'm 26 years old, and I work for a Liberty Mutual Insurance Company. I am a personal direct sales rep for Liberty Mutual, which means I work out of the company, out of the office, directly for Liberty Mutual. Our headquarters are right here in Boston, and I actually work right over in the Westwood Mass office. Um, I'm not going to going to really go dig deep into what I do, what my job detail is. I'll just kind of give you an overview, but I really want to focus on the right things that I did to get where I am now and what I may have changed. Um, I went to Milton High, as I just spoke about. I played three sports, uh, varsity soccer, <coughs> excuse me, softball, and varsity ice hockey, captain. I also was in a couple clubs, Irish American, photography, um, a couple other ones. From then on, I went to Nichols College. Has anyone ever heard of Nichols College? No. It's a very small school. They are growing out in Dudley, Mass., which is a very small town. <laughs> um, it's small. It's private. But I did well there. I knew... You have to know yourself as an individual, and I applied to two schools. I applied to UMass, and I applied to Nichols, because they were looking at me for hockey, a club team. Um, one of my regrets is that I did not research and use my resources at Milton High further to find out what other schools were and could be an option that I could excel at. But the, the good thing that I did do was not go to UMass, because I knew myself, being a person, I would get lost in a large school like that. So definitely do your research on the universities as little as, you know, what they serve in the cafeteria to how big is the campus, where are you going to be living, how many roommates are you going to have, do you have a choice. It, this all matters because you are a person that needs to be happy where you are. Um, like I just said, use your resources to your full advantage. I went to my guidance counselor, I think, once or twice, probably the entire four years I was at Milton High. I went to my guidance counselor. They have the same things in college. Kind of as a mentor, probably once a week. Like to the point where he was probably hiding and locking his door. He was really there, but I was knocking on it anyways. I wanted to make sure that I was setting myself up for success. Um, in high school and in college, I mean, I didn't have the best grades. I was average, but I wanted to excel in other aspects and kind of make myself stand out in some way. Um, a lot of my colleagues were taking general business as their major. So I decided, you know, general business had the word general in it, kind of, you know, not really out of the ordinary. I focused on marketing and sales, but my major was business communications. I think that this was one thing that did help my resume kind of stick out. Saying that you're in general business, it kind of is a wide you know, term of different... Um, classes and whatnot, but um, I de definitely want to focus on communications and get a job in that field. Where I was very lucky is my college, Nichols, had a professional development seminar. Um, I explained this in the last group that we just spoke to. If your college doesn't offer a professional development seminar, seminar usually it's short for PDS, 
I would try to find one, whether it be at your school or during the summer. These courses are going to give you the skills you need to do well in an interview, what to wear, what not to wear, what your resume should look like, how to stand out, the whole nine yards. Um, so I was really lucky with that. Excuse me. Um, so that was professional development seminars. We had to take it at Nichols at my school, and they have put this into a couple of the colleges I know since. But you had to pass the class in order to get on to the next grade. You, it was basically like you had to, to graduate each year to get on to the next year. My school really had a, a wonderful career services um, program, and every college does, whether they're known for it or not, take it advantage to it to the most that you can. I could go back to my school right now, and I'm sure a lot of alumni could as well, go to my uh, career services department and ask them for help if I needed to. I said, you know, I, I need to spruce up my resume. I need to, let's do a mock interview, something. These are what your schools are going to offer you, and it's what you need to take advantage of in order to do well. Um, the last thing that I really want to focus on is internships. I know that you guys have probably heard the word a couple times today, but it's really something that I want to get into your mind that it's going to help you succeed in life, having an internship. My internship with Liberty Mutual, I was lucky enough that it was paid. I got $18 an hour and credits towards graduating, which was awesome. Um, not every internship pays $18 an hour, but there definitely are some that will. I was lucky enough that I had been going to my guidance counselor and annoying him so much that I got every tip possible from him. Um, and one of the best tips he gave me was to take my resume after it was perfect and put it on every single website you could where you could upload it and that recruiters, employers, you know, whomever is looking to get people into their company could check it out. I got a call literally a week later. I was at Chili's with my girlfriends eating and it was the manager of Liberty Mutual himself um, saying he saw my resume, how well-rounded I was, you know, having a 2.5 GPA in high school really didn't matter anymore. I worked hard enough to get to the next step, then to the next step, and to the next step. It's those small steps that are going to get you to where you want to be. Um, he called me, he interviewed me, he was a little misinformed. He interviewed me for a sales representative role, which I am now, rather than an intern, but I got the job, so then I automatically got the internship, which was great. Um, I did the internship. I was lucky enough that I truly loved my job right away. Um, I basically was, you know, what an intern is. You do the little things here and there that makes the entire office work better. Um, pushing envelopes, stamps, marketing materials, thank you cards, which is really gave me carpal tunnel. But um, So I was lucky enough to find out that I, it wasn't just insurance, because insurance can sound boring. I know I'm sure for all of you, you probably know nothing about insurance right now, and that's fine. But it was the sales, of the sales aspect of it. I was a sales intern, not a service intern. And I loved watching the sales reps go out, you know, sitting in with them on meetings and seeing how they can talk to someone find out something about the person that that person didn't even know that they really need coverage for and be able to offer them an affordable product that covers those needs that is going to, hopefully they won't need to use it in the future, but God forbid they did, would be able to piece back their life like something never happened, being auto home and life insurance. Um, so I really just want to reiterate, you know, when, when, in, when, in, when you get into college, definitely the first thing you do freshman year. I waited until my... Uh, basically the end of junior year, beginning of senior, senior year, to really look into internships. And again, like I just said, I do think I had a little bit of luck that I got um, a good resume and got it right on there and someone called me right away. I would tell you to look into it, you know, the first day, freshman year. Go up to your career services, ask them what they offer, ask what they do to assist you, ask what classes you might be able to take that you could enroll in for professional development. It's just like high school is preparing you for college. College is preparing you for the real life. And you're going to need to know what to do once you graduate on your own. I mean, there's going to be people that can assist you. And like I always say, ask, 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 ask. I ask questions on a daily basis having to do with my job or outside of work. No one knows everything. And the most important thing is just ask and use your resources to um, the best of your ability. I mean, I didn't know, like I said, I didn't know what I was wanted to do until the last semester of senior year of college, literally right before I was graduating. And um, I've been with Liberty Mutual now for four years, and I plan on being here until I retire. So it's something that I found that I really love. So you really have to find out 
what you like, what you don't like, what you're good at, what you're not good at, and um, you'll do great. And use your resources at college. I can't stress that enough. Any questions? <laughs>